Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are doing the 2018 Steam Wishlist Cleanup. Today we'll be going through the game starting with the letter P, so I'll scroll up and you can get a little preview as I talk about what we're doing. So, over the past year, I've been looking at every single game that comes out on Steam as part of playing Hearthstone and talking about video game news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as live streams so when I looked at a new game that came out uh, this year I would add it to my wish list. I've since realized that was a really dumb mistake and I should have been putting new games that might be worth playing actually on a fall list and honestly even before that there, there has been some games that were added on the wish list to make it so big now that that it's, it's gotten to a point where I realized I need to be more picky. I need to hold the wish list to a higher standard. My wish list should be a curated experience of games that I would like to actually cover on my YouTube channel. It shouldn't be just a random assortment of games with some that actually I very well may not want to cover. And that's important because one of the two ways people can support me right now is either supporting me through Patreon or friending me on Steam and gifting me a game off my wishlist or just, yeah, you know, I'll take any game that people would like to give gift me. Uh, but it doesn't certainly help anything if there's something that is just downright awful on this wishlist and somebody gifts it to me and then I play it because I feel obliged and I don't have fun and people aren't uh, the person who gifted it to me isn't isn't too happy with me probably reviewing it pretty poorly there's so many good games on Steam and I don't really see myself as the type of video game critic that would seek out bad games on Steam so I'm trying to definitely curate this experience more there's a lot of games we've been able to remove so far but there's a lot more work to go through and this will be a long video and there'll be points where I recommend just removing uh, just pausing the video and taking a break so first game we have is p.a.m.e.l.a .e uh, register trademark uh, I think half the time when people use these symbols, they they literally are using them wrong. Uh, because to use the R registered sign means you're claiming you actually have a registered trademark, which I wouldn't be surprised if this game developer didn't. Uh, but I've seen copyright, I've seen trademark, I've seen uh, I've seen emojis, uh, which emojis don't bother me because there's no legal legalese or like official or use of that but um, also I've seen games that are just uh, name drawn on Steam so this is a early access survival sci-fi uh, horror game if it really is early access then I should probably just put it on the fall list and not have to make any further decision I would never cover an early access game, or I try very hard to avoid covering early access games. There is also a slight problem at the end of 2018 to have a game that is still in early access that came out on March 9th, 2017. Um, as for what this game really is, it looks like you're running around shooting zombies. Is this a VR game? No. Uh, not you're not shooting zombies well I said the wrong thing totally there you're shooting if I was to guess um, robots so we could skip here so I'm gonna use this game as an example but really this is just going to be put moved over to a follow list uh, we're looking specifically for red flags and the question will come down to oh maybe it is zombies <laughs> a bunch of people a bunch of dead bodies at least um, so you're playing I think as a robot 
running around. This kind of looks like Dead, uh, Dead Island uh, in its architecture and layout, at least the scene before did. Hmm. Well, it actually didn't look like you're playing as a human. So yeah, you're running around and shooting, so it's a standard sci-fi game. Uh, I don't see anything inherently terrible with this game. It looks pretty good. It's just the early access probably makes me uh, wonder if there's a lack of story, a lack of level design, and they, they're probably just working on the basic mechanics. Uh, so what we're going to look for, I'm going to copy this so I can move it over to the right of my screen. I have four columns, one to remove a game, one to put it at the top of the wish list, one to ignore it completely, which only I've ignored like three games. Uh, there, there has to be a pretty special reason if I'm going to ignore the game. And one to follow. Uh, to use this as an example, we're looking for red flags, for instance, a mixed review in the last 30 days compared to a mostly positive review overall seems to ind indicate that there's been a change in attitude in these number of reviews. These reviews are people who actually bought the game on Steam, so it excludes people who activated it with a code that reviewed the game or got it for free some other way. Uh, so it's people who put their money where their mouth is as far as Steam knows. Um, if we get desperate, we'll look at the developer and the publisher and see if the game is in bad company, if the developer has created a bunch of other games that are negatively reviewed, or that, that would be another red flag. Sometimes if we look at good games, like this game would be interesting to click here and just see if the, um, this developer has created anything else, which might give it a little bit more leniency if they have another game that is very well reviewed that because that would make me be more willing to can keep an early access game that's that's a year old on on the follow list next year when we do the follow list cleanup which will be a much quicker experience uh, i'm gonna have to make decisions about this game's been in early access for four years is it really relevant anymore? Um, I have basically every plugin for Steam that you can have on Chrome. So I believe this is the Is There Any Deal plugin, which will tell you the historic low price of this game, which hasn't been very low uh, as far as discounts. Um, and apparently the Halloween sale has ended. That's what I'm recording this, is that. Uh, November 1st was the last day and we'll keep an eye out for languages if we find a game that is English and Russian only or English and simplified Chinese and, tra and or traditional Chinese only uh, those games have a tendency to be higher uh, have a higher chance of being troll games or what I call very low effort games um, which mean about the same thing uh, although I'd say the reason why I call them very low effort games is a lot of times games don't feel like they're actually trying to troll anybody. They're just bad games in general, just of such a horribly low level quality that they shouldn't be on Steam. Or Steam should at least consider removing them. But on the other hand, th there's a good argument to just leave them alone because people don't find the bad games anyways. The only people that see them are people like me. Which, of which there are very few people who are looking at every single game coming out on Steam, which there certainly are a lot. We have the How Long to Beat plugin, that if it has data will tell you how long this game is to be the, the main story, the main story with extra, or play as a completionist. That can be helpful in comparison to this price. For instance, this is an $18 game, which is kind of high uh, if this was filled in and said it took 30 minutes to play the game that would be a problem. We'll keep an eye also to make sure it has a good single player experience. Also it, make sure if it's a VR game it can be played without VR because I'm not going to buy a VR headset. 
There's also a open critic or Metacritic plugin that if this game had reviews would pop up some boxes uh, showing Metacritic scores, open critic scores, which can sometimes be a little bit useful, but generally I don't pay attention to Metacritic scores. Uh, we have the Steam charts, which can tell you some small peek into how many people at one time has played this game at 97 as an all-time peak for a game that's uh, over a year old now uh, close to two years old uh, um, that's a pretty low amount but 21 playing today is kind of a high amount and then we have the Steam Spy plugin which tells you the average playtime so that's everybody who launched the game for a minute and then never played it again to everybody who launched the game and left it running for hundreds of hours assuming Steam Spy doesn't do some kind of weighted filtering I assume that's what that means that that's what the word average would mean uh, it would have to be some kind of filtered average playtime a weighted average playtime if it wasn't like that uh, Generally, the average playtime is somewhere between a uh, third to a fourth of the amount of time it takes to play a game. So, if this is 6 hours and 30 minutes, then the, you're looking at something that's approaching 25 hours as far as the game as it is in its current form, but it's early access, so that could certainly change. And it, you can also see here, if their data is accurate, nobody has played it at all in two weeks. But so that's the problem. We won't really be using the performance survey, but that certainly can be useful in other times. And then Steam's own recommendation engine isn't the greatest. Uh, so it is going to, for the most part, push you and recommend to you games that are in the top 10% of games with similar... Uh, with similar tags, uh, user tags here. Uh, and so often you'll get recommendations that they have nothing close to what the game is and sometimes you'll get recommendations to games that you haven't seen before. Um, and sometimes you'll get recommendations that are just completely off. Um, Generally speaking, I don't want to read positive reviews. I feel about 10 positive reviews is equal one negative review by the numbers. But what I'm looking for is moderately lengthy negative reviews, things that can be skimmed. I don't want it to go on for paragraphs to paragraphs, but I also don't want something that is just one sentence. Um, let's see. I in an early access game uh, saying a game feels clunky and isn't optimized uh, is not really a complaint to remove it from the list because you assume that that would be fixed before they release it out of early access you would hope I guess at this point it's help hope here's an example of a positive review that's not gonna be that helpful um, it's saying very short sentences but also we don't want to go into something that just goes on and on and on and on uh, because that's just too much so that's this game as an example let's move on to the next game and we're gonna hit the pac-man series and so the pac-man series is going to stay on the wishlist Pac-Man 256 in particular because these games have a lot of relevancy like Pac-Man, Tetris, Donkey Kong, Super Mario Brothers if you are anyone who is over the age of I would say 15 you're almost guaranteed to know the names of these games even if you haven't played them before in your life um, they, they have just a real high relevancy which is which is important to kind of know your roots there's tons of Atari and Commodore 64 games uh, that uh, 
people wouldn't recognize and people really don't need to play. Uh, Chopper might be a good example or the E.T. video game although because of the in, of the the kind of controversy of so many E.T. cartridges being buried in the desert that one it does have some relevancy but but there certainly are games that that came out that don't really matter uh, some might argue that Asteroid is not really a very relevant game for people to play uh, because it's so simplistic but and really there's not too many games that are exactly like it that are very good uh, Pac-Man 256 to be more about this game is a mobile phone game that was uh, ported to Steam and that doesn't inherently mean it'll get removed from my wish list but it's the idea of making Pac-Man an infinite runner of sorts where you're just going upward and upward forever um, trying to get higher and higher scores now there is kind of some silliness with that uh, because Pac-Man was always a score kind of infinite running game it you've just eliminated the idea that you could clear off a board and move to the next level and instead the level just continues to go and they've added some features and, and, and new things like this laser beam but when I played this on my cell phone it, I, I was bored after about five minutes and that's gonna be kind of a running theme with the Pac-Man games but they have such high relevancy I can't not want to cover them. I'd probably only do a 30 minute spotlight on them, but that's kind of it. Next you have the mixed reviewed, 62% of 161 reviews, uh, Pac-Man Museum, which includes a lot of different versions of Pac-Man, uh, original Pac-Man. Now, this almost is a game that is something I'd want to purchase just to support the industry I don't know maybe you can make the art argument Bandai Namco isn't the best company to support in the video game industry but they're not the worst either they're, they hardly are Konami where the Konami is is no interest whatsoever in making video games and if they do come out with a video game it's gonna be a cheap uh, cash in in an attempt to basically rip off the customers um, so pac-man arguably like it, it would be an interesting uh, experiment to try to figure it out uh, I remember playing this 3d pac-man that's on the screen or, or at least a clone of that game on on DOS in my youth uh, Pac-Man arguably might be the second most modded game and cloned game. Oh, I'd say Doom probably has more mods and clones that were made for it. This was in an era where like ideas were short and uh, programmers had a lot of time eh. so they could just take the concept of Pac-Man and change it slightly so that it plays a little bit differently uh, you can see though that the emulation probably that is being done here is pretty bad we can look at the reviews um, and there's extra DLC which to get Miss Pac-Man that that could be the reason right there is the fact that you have to pay five dollars extra to get Miss Pac-Man uh, I'd really just kind of want to own this game so I feel okay with with getting an emulator getting the ROM somewhere else and running it on an emulator um, Miss Pac-Man is almost certainly the right Pac-Man game to play if you're only going to play one let's see here we have wait for a sale to be honest Pac-Man arrangement might be the most bored I've ever seen uh, I've ever been playing a video game hmm Let's see, let's see if we can get something 
more substantive out of this. Here we go. This is a simpl simply a lazy cash grab with a small bit of appeal for an obscure game crudely transferred to the PC format. What's off Pac-Man is not included. You have to pay, I mean Miss Pac-Man is not included. You have to pay $5 more for that one title. What the F. Uh, this game also reminds me reminds you that every single time that the DLC is available for purchase when you log in to play, watch how fast that gets old. There's not even Steam cards or any viable sign that they're paying attention to the forums. That's unacceptable for a large company like Namco. Uh, as a Pac-Man fan, I recommend you stay away unless you're, you've are you got some change burning a hole in your pocket and even then, get yourself a sandwich and you enjoy it more. Uh, so yeah, the one thing you don't want to do is cross, uh, it does have achievements. You, you don't want to uh, cross retro gaming fans because they are picky and they, they demand perfection. And if you're going to basically resell your old game and run it on an emulator, you've got to do it right. And I'm sure Bandai Namco was thinking that this was more of a game to sell to kids somehow. Uh, it, they probably were thinking, yeah, we'll just sell this to the wrong to an audience that doesn't care about it. Moving on, here we have Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, which is another example of Bandai Namco mishandling the Pac-Man series. They they really have mishandled it completely since its original release, because as soon as Pac-Man could have gotten on the consoles. Pac-Man should have been a staple of of every console and a series character. Uh, for as many Mario, Super Mario games out there, there should be Pac-Man games. Uh, but that just did not happen. And I think the Ghostly Adventures was an attempt to do that. It just didn't really fit, succeed. This came out in 2013. Uh, there is a another like Pac-Man game that is not around uh, actually playing Pac-Man um, that happened before this, but I guess it might not be uh, available on Steam. And I could click on Bandai Namco's listing here, but uh, it won't show Pac-Man games per se. Uh, I guess it would be easier just to to uh, play the games let's see poor checkpoints according to this negative review hmm. it's based on a pac-man cartoon so yeah if i was to just type in pac-man and then hit enter let's see there's an arcade series arcade game series Pac-Man that comes out under A that I don't believe is on my wish list in an arcade game series Miss Pac-Man and see right now Miss Pac-Man is a dollar ninety-nine that's uh, probably all you want uh, to to have then I've covered Pac-Man Championship Edition DX uh, which is the first game that probably did did the game well and, and tried to modernize it and made it actually worth playing uh, then we're running at several games that might be Pac-Man clones but yeah the one I'm thinking about is not here on Steam Pac-Adventures 3D that might be it Hmm. Hidden deep, deep down. So let's see. So yeah, arcade series Pac-Man in by comparison is rated very positively. So there's a series here of a mixed bag of good Pac-Man games and, and bad Pac-Man games. And paying just a dollar ninety-nine to get um the one game that you're actually interested in 
is probably a better deal for most people. Uh, and the one you should probably be interested in is Miss Pac-Man. Uh, because it was just the default updated version of Pac-Man. Uh, Pac Adventures 3D, on the other hand, is a clone and has nothing to do with the series. So that won't go on the wish list, but I was not wrong, certainly, when I talked about um, the fact that you know, it was cloned a lot. Uh, the problem with Pac-Man Championship Edition DX is that they then followed it up with a not so good continuation of the idea uh, in Championship Edition 2. So even after having a game that I would say was a resounding success, it failed to keep people's interest. And inherently, I think maybe arcade games also are going to suffer um, from that problem because games like ar arcade games are just kind of boring in general. The, 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 they're designed to be interesting for as long as the three or five lives you get it for a quarter last. Or, and some of them are designed to, to have you feed a lot of quarters into it. But a lot of them are, are not. Uh, and they were built around constraints of the time of not having very good graphics and not having very much memory. So uh, there wasn't a lot that, that you could do with them. By modern standards, an arcade game is a joke. It's a, it's a demo. It's a hacking mini game inside of a bigger 3D expansive first person shooter. Uh, yeah, if you were playing something like Bioshock is a great example uh, and you have to hack something you you're playing an arcade game of pipes if they had changed the hacking mini game in Bioshock 1 from pipes into uh, Pac-Man it would have felt pretty much the same uh, here's a unhelpful review of an infinite loading bug like many others I can't even play the first level uh, Hmm. Let's see. Too much of the gameplay was changed according to this. Bonuses that you need to advance in the level can now run away from you. Ghosts no longer are instant kill, but you bounce off them until they become aggressive. Ghosts don't form a single train, but multiple trains. Uh, that's where ghosts would get in lines in DX and then you could eat the power pellet and eat a long line of uh, ghosts. Uh, ghosts, let's see. In order to eat them after eating a power pellet, you need to attack them from the front of the train, otherwise you bounce off. Yeah, so they just like drastically changed how Pac-Man Championship, Championship Edition uh, one played for kind of no reason. All they really needed to do is make more levels. That that's that's all they really needed to do for a sequel, and they couldn't even do that. Moving on, uh, we have yet another game being re-released or published by THQ Nordic, which is a company that I'm always afraid for because it seems like they are always spending a lot of money to acquire the licensing rights or possibly the entire companies of uh, old game companies to re-release old games most of which were owned by the original THQ uh, and uh, now they're they're trying to become a clone of a company that managed to fall apart and fail uh, so the painkiller series has some small relevancy I've never played it before but I think people would like it now if I recall correctly the the hell and damnation is HD graphics so HD is coming from that it's rated mostly positive there might be another painkiller 
game out there. Well, apparently there's a whole pack of them, if I can see. Like, you have this game, you have a lot of DLC, um, which maybe you need to buy. And then you have Overdose, which is rated uh, mostly positive. You have Redemption, which is mixed reviewed. And then you have Black Edition, which came out in 2007. So this came out in 2012. So I imagine the Black Edition is the, um, the, this game remastered. Or, or vice versa. This is the original version, and I imagine this is the remaster. And but then the the question becomes: Recurring Evil, where does that play in? And Resurrection, where does that play in? Like these bundles don't put things in a chronological order, and sometimes it doesn't put them in a logical order. Now this bundle has been at a historic low price of four dollars and eighty cents. That sounds a lot better than paying $70 for this game series because really this would be a double A series style game um, it's not a top tier super relevant first person shooter quake clone uh, which is basically what I, I would describe it as it, it looks fine uh, but then you certainly would have to ask yourself do you play this game or do you play the Doom reboot? I think you you would be much better suited to just play the Doom reboot and uh, be into that series. I'm not sure that the Painkiller series has anything to offer people who aren't nostalgic. But as a video game critic, I know that there is some small bit of relevancy here. So I'm willing to play something I haven't played before and try and criticize it. Uh, but I certainly could see also deciding to just skip it. Uh, that's going to be the case for, I think, a lot of the games on the wish list once I come back and decide, like, how many of these games do I want to play. Particularly, uh, not so much first person shooters because there's always going to be another first person shooter. In, in the video game world until we get to a point where we're totally tired of them, which may never happen. Uh, but when I think about RPGs the, of the Western style and JRPGs of the Eastern style, there, there's such a huge time commitment to play even one JRPG or one RPG. I'm probably only going to try to play the top 10 of those games, where I know there's probably dozens and dozens of games that are worth playing but it's just such a huge commitment of time um, and also I have a lot of hidden object games on the wish list that I probably need to limit that list a lot of point and click adventure games that might need to limit that list but I'm a sucker for point and click adventure games Painkiller Black Edition looks like it's a different game and uh, not just in the fact that it's not in HD graphics, but uh, the, it just looks like it's a different story. If there is any story, I'm not 100% sure there actually is. It may just be short, simple levels, run around, kill, kill the bosses. This is from People Can Fly, which I believe is the developer, if I was to check, of Bulletstorm. Yes. So they went on... To make Bulletstorm, and it's kind of questionable whether it's relevant to play Bulletstorm either. Uh, but again, people certainly like the game. Nobody's hating it. It's 89% positive of the reviews. Uh, moving on, we have a game. Uh, there was definitely a lot of painkiller games that should have been added to the wish list. So I'm gonna have to go back and and put some extra effort onto that. Um, we have a game called Paint It Black. Use the logic as a paintbrush to restore the lost works of pixel art. So, what kind of game is this really? 
A lot of these descriptions don't make sense. Okay, so this is a... What are these called? Picross game? Yeah, Picross is, I think, the best description. Um, although I think Nintendo owns the copyright on the term Picross. And this was in 2015. It's 98% positive or 310 uh, 310 user reviews. It's asking $4, which has been the lowest price uh, historically. In inherently, I really would only want to play like one uh, of these games. 150 puzzles seems like that's a reasonable amount. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure I'd actually play through 150 of these puzzles unless 30 or 40 of them are pretty quick and easy. Picross in general is not a difficult game. It's not like Sudoku where it's complicated or that complicated. Um, let's see. Trading cards and achievements. 18 to 38 hours of gameplay according to how long to, to beat. So this might be the best Picross game on wishlist and here's a great example of Steam's recommendation engine. Uh, they suggesting for a Picross game that there will be that it is like PC building simulator, which it's nowhere like. Abduction, which is the newest game from the developers of Mist, and is a Mist-like game. And so, while it might be labeled or tagged as a puzzle game, it has nothing close to the puzzles of a Picross game. Donut County, which is a puzzle game that is quite unique in its idea, but it's not really, again, doesn't have anything to do with Picross or Ward puzzles. And then it recommends Honey Pop, a game I've covered that's overwhelmingly positive, that has nudity and sexual content in it, and it's a match three game uh, and dating simulator. So that's really out of nowhere. And then The Witness is also a puzzle game, but not anywhere close. So half of these games are getting recommended just because they have the tag of puzzles. Um, there's probably enough room in my wish list to have one good Picross game on there. Here. And I don't see a real reason why this shouldn't be that one. It looks pretty good. Uh, there's doesn't seem to be like anything that's low effort here. Uh, you certainly could have not animated these characters and not um, not thought about doing anything. This technically would still probably fall under a single screen Unity game, but they, they've put some effort here to make it look good. Uh, Donut County is a game that I think is on my wish list. It's kind of brand new, so I want to double check and make sure that's on the wish list. I'm adding more things than I'm taking things off uh, at this level, but that's okay because I, I actually haven't removed anything yet. Uh, but that's part of this cleanup process too is that we're trying to figure out uh, if a game is worthwhile to to play and should it be on the wish list. That means if there are, have been any gaps and I've forgotten to add something I should I should add it. Next we have Paint the Town Red which is a melee combat game with voxel creatures so it looks like this is probably an, a bit of an asset flip Roblox game but it is rated very very high for pe people who played it and bought it. It's early access so uh, they, I probably at this point should remove it just because this came out three years ago. This game is abandoned at this point. You you can't be in early access for three years. Um, the idea of starting a brawl uh, is a slightly interesting idea. It's probably just a scene though that you would have in a much bigger and better game. 
and you would think that maybe paint the town red would imply that there is a mini gameplay mechanic where you're trying to get the blood to be in different places and that increases a score or something but I'm not really seeing anything here like Let's see, they're still working on this game, yeah, but that kind of doesn't matter. Like, nine hours to play it as a completionist. I just don't feel like this game holds up to... to the game, other games of similar styles. And honestly, why not play Mortal Kombat instead? Yeah, that, that would make more sense. Yeah. This this one, I, being in early access so long and not having a real obvious gameplay mechanic other than just running around shooting people uh, or punching people is kind of ridiculous. Uh, also, does this support VR? No. Like, that might have brought it some more relevancy had they patched in VR at some point. Uh, but it doesn't. Let's move forward. We found one. Uh, next we have a visual novel called Pale Spectrum Part 2 of the B Book of Grey Magic. I think I'm keeping... I'm trying to have a little bit of... A variety in visual novels if I'm ever going to cover visual novels uh, there's still very much a case that I probably wouldn't because it require me to just do a lot of reading um, so this is more of a Western art style not inherently uh, art style that I am in love with the design of but it, it looks relatively done well um, this is not just terrible watercolor paintings. There's some shading and, and drawing. It has full audio uh, according to this and see that is a big factor to keeping this game on the wish list is if I'm getting the uh, getting the characters to speak to me that is very helpful and uh, it re removes the, the need it's had an all-time peak of 20 players, so not a lot of people have played it. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. So, the thing I want to check here is this developer. And just see what else they've developed. And I imagine it's just... Let's see. Perceptions of the Dead 2 is positive. Perceptions of the Dead 1 is very positive. Uh, Embers of Magic is mostly positive. Brilliant Shadow is very positive. But apparently they didn't... Uh, well, Brilliant Shadows is part one of the books of Grey Magic. Which one is... Pale Spectrum is the one we're looking at. Yep. Yeah. Part two. So it's a unique art style. It's not the Western anime character art style. And so yeah, I'm trying to trying to have some variety there. At a certain point, that variety becomes eh, just an a unfair desire for forced equity, equal outcome when the truth is there's hundreds upon thousands of Japanese visual novels which have been coming out for years and they're a lot better and th most people in the west would never make a visual novel in the first place and like i said before still not 100 percent certain i would um, put e play any of them actually because there's a lot of commitment here now i'm looking at this game and i have no idea why this is even on the wish list this looks like it might be a slightly polished cell phone port. And was I thinking at some point, perhaps, yeah, I may have been, that a cell phone game that was really, really polished 
and port of the Steam should be highlighted. Um, in my current mood, I would say that is not really necessary or true. Like most cell phone games, if they look like cell phone games, are not worth playing. Um, this doesn't look like a recognizable developer. This doesn't look like it's really anything. The only other thing, reason why this might have been on a wish list is that I just accidentally added it to the wish list. Um, and see, the only other game by this developer is looks like it's a Super Meat Boy clone style game of platforming and jumping and brutally hard uh, levels, which I couldn't beat Super Meat Boy 1 and so I don't really want to play any game that's similar to that, That, particularly since I'm fairly certain Super Meat Boy is the best of those styles of games. So this can get removed easily. Next we have a indie adventure platformer. Like the, there is something I'm realizing about these action platformers that they probably are the next generation iteration of something like Super Mario Brothers uh, but without the nostalgic of Super Mario Brothers to hide the fact that probably Super Mario Brothers isn't that good of a game particularly one you run into a lot of these platformers that that look really really difficult and really really repetitive this one might be okay like it, it looks very polished certainly it has boss fights uh, it looks like it's very varied in what you're doing hmm seems like it's interesting it, it, it's interesting also that the the name seems un, unfamiliar to you this is from Pladius and Plugin Digital. Plugin Digital is a publisher I recognize as publishing generic things. Uh, some things are good, some things are bad. It has an episode two, so I want to make sure I add that to the wish list. Sometimes this DLC, it, like most DLC, was not added to the wish list, so that was definitely a chance. Here you can see it's 12 hours and it had an open critic of 83. Uh, Ori in the Blind Forest is a great example of a platformer that uh, that I own and need to play and just haven't gotten around to it so I I'm, I'm probably wouldn't want to buy this game until I finished play or until I played Ori in the Blind Forest it keeps getting delayed and just put at a lower priority I don't even know why moving on yeah the second episode get, needs to be added we have a game called Panoramical which says it's a manipulate the look and feel of more than a dancing mesmerizing landscapes in this immersive musical adventure through space and time wanted to scroll down here and see if it was VR so the the problem with games like this is all you're really seeing are screenshots until you see the video and then it's really going to be on the video as far as what is getting manipulated and i imagine there is no ui and there is no player character so what we're seeing right now very possibly is getting manipulated by a controller or somebody playing with a mouse and keyboard and you just kind of don't know what's happening or what the options are it could be somebody with a controller right now is affecting the size of the sphere in the middle it could be they they're affecting the spin or bounce of something it could be that they're doing all kinds of things they could be controlling the camera zooming in or zooming out um, Sorry, I took a moment to drink some water there. 
now would be a good time to pause and take a break yourself um just don't know so you, so then that just puts you down to well it's 90 percent positive of 142 reviews it's not been on discounted i i probably would not pay more than two dollars for this like a dollar 99 and it's never been that low so that's okay i can leave this on the wish list because i can trust myself to to not really do that you can also see it's two dollars so uh two hours two hours for five dollars is kind of expensive um i wouldn't be surprised if there are a few other games that are very similar to this idea um if there's one thing nice to say about walking simulators at least you're walking around here it's questionable hmm see here we have it's an interesting concept but I don't like the way it was executed it reminds me of the visualizers I played around with on my ps2 back while well, a while back but with more elaborate unfortunately no matter how I try all the scenes have the distinct LSD trip look and not the alien planet look I was hoping for I don't like the music for the same reasons it's just a bunch of electronic sounds but there's never any melody once you start messing with the different perimeters, you're, you'll be bombarded with a plethora of electronic noise. I was hoping for a modernized version of uh, Synth or Swinth. Maybe that's a game which I played around with some 30 years ago on my Commodore 64, but this isn't it. Hmm. So... I think when when I think about how would I criticize this game I'm at such a weird loss I, I, I don't think there's much you can say here like I could potentially say I don't like the graphics but that's almost certainly gonna be a subjective opinion I could say I don't like the music that's gonna be a subjective opinion um, I don't know what the goal here is originally so I probably would just assume that they achieved their goal uh, or I could look at it from the perspective of a regular video game and say it's a complete failure of a regular video game because it has no gameplay mechanics it has no reward system it has no punishment system if you fail uh, it's more of an application than a video game and for those reasons, I'm going to take this off the wish list. I just don't think that there's a really a review to, to do here. If people want to play this game, that's fine. If, if it really was a music visualizer, it kind of fails on that part too because you can't put in your own music. So, um, yeah, it's, it's one of the very few extremely odd quote-unquote games that that I just would not be able to think of a way to review. Uh, next we have a game called Panty Party, which is tagged with anime sexual content memes. It actually doesn't have any nudity in it. So uh, I looked at these uh, beforehand so we could just show it off. You play as girls underwear and all the enemies are girls underwear and you're fighting in a top down uh, I well over the third person over the shoulder perspective game um, and it, it really is just jokes now because twitch and YouTube have gotten more conservative there there are definitely a lot of lewd and sex games uh, out there that I couldn't cover this is probably one I would be fine to cover as as a joke it also is kind of unique in that it's not going for a dating sim or visual novel element um, so it there's there's probably room enough in every genre action adventure platformer to have at least one lewd game if it's really good you can see that this is 91% positive 
So there's no reason to have it off, uh, take it off the wish list. At two dollar, a historical low price of two dollars and fifty nine cents, this would be a pretty good deal. At ten dollars, you're probably paying too much. Um, two dollar, two to three hours of gameplay, so it's not a super long game. Um, is there anything else to say here? We could look at the developer and see what else that they've made. They made Forward to the Sky and Fantasy Versus. Hmm. So let's see the other games that this would be in, in company with. Uh, yeah, Forward to the Sky is an interesting double-A action platformer game that most people don't know. Uh, it should be on my wish list already, but I don't recall seeing it. We've hit a point where I'm so far into the wish list and I've looked at so many games, I don't remember the ones that are already on my wish list. Also, uh, I certainly don't remember all the games I actually own, so I may own all, several games. Um, and you can see this is not, while well, there's the anime style, this is not designed to be uh, like sexual or lewd in any way it's just a pretty generic game and that action adventure and then fantasy versus is a rpg game hmm. which i think i decided to not have on my wish list because it was a little too short and a little too irrelevant to play an RPG uh, this RPG over over so many other bigger uh, more relevant ones so I'm gonna go ahead and close that tab so I don't accidentally add it back to the wish list. moving forward yeah I don't think we're gonna run into too many lewd games for for this one there certainly have been some episodes here where uh, a lot of them were on the wish list. Some of them got removed. Some of them stayed. Um, I'd like to see a new service come out, or YouTube. It'd be ideally, it'd be better if YouTube just ad adopted a less censorship policy than what they have now, and and said, look, if you can just label this appropriately and and let it, and tag it as as for adults only, you can play it. But inherently even if you do label things appropriately which you can do you can age gate uh, videos on YouTube then they instantly become demonetized if you're age gated uh, age gated so you get no money whatsoever from ads on it but then also there's probably some background elements there too you could get kicked out of being monetized, your entire channel being monetized. Lots of other little things can be done in the background to to make your channel less successful. Um, next we have Paper Sorcerer, which is an RPG styled around drawing things with pen and paper. Hmm. Eighty-six percent positive. Not a hundred percent sure I'd want to play this though. What I'm thinking is, is a game like this gets kind of completely run over because it's probably just a dungeon crawler, uh, for lack of a better uh, term. It probably gets run over by something like uh, Darkest Dungeon. Like which is probably a lot better of a game to play. Might Magic Le X Legacy. Hmm. This is not the kind of RPGs that I would generally want to do. Is I wouldn't want to do a RPG that is mostly in the dungeon. Let's see. Doesn't understand difficulty scaling. Going to the negative review. 
pretty neat art style. Uh, boring, annoying menus. Yeah, I really think that well, well, 14 to 21 hours is actually kind of intriguing because playing Darkest Dungeon would be a lot more time. I, I really think that this is just a lesser version and it would be repetitive. Uh, you would have to be a fan, I, I'm feeling, of some of the better dungeon crawling RPGs uh, out there. Uh, this is a... Uh, most of the dungeon crawlers are anime terrible dungeon crawler games. Most dungeon crawlers are terrible. Um, also, but... Yeah. I, I think you'd have to be scraping the bottom of the barrel, basically. To decide that that's this is the dungeon crawler to play, and, and part of that probably is the art style, because while that looks nice in the short run, putting 12, uh, 14 hours into the gameplay, that's gonna be rather annoying. Hmm, this is an interesting idea of making a RPG where you just stand in one place and your blade. This gets wider and uh, longer and longer. Hmm. So, this feels like this is probably a really, really short game, though. And it came out this year and only has four user reviews, so. In theory, I could put this on the follow list, but honestly, this really feels like it is just a uh, one one joke gimmick yeah, I'm not sure I'd want to to indulge in this let's see hmm. hmm you know what I'll put this on the follow, follow list just to be really generous like, but in all likelihood, next year, Bold Blade will get removed. Um, so if I'm going to put it on a fall list, I should just close it. Then Might Magic X Legacy is mixed reviews. The I've played the Heroes of Might Magic series, but I, I've never really had a lot of interest in playing the standard Might Magic series. You'd think Might Magic and, you know, um, what is the other one, Dungeons and Dragons series would, would have really good video game tie-ins, but they, they tend not to. It's, it's easy enough to not pay the extra money to license uh, Might Magic or Dungeons and Dragons and then make a game that looks almost exactly like what the licensed version would look like anyways. Um, I'll probably add this to the wish list though. And I'm not sure that there actually are any other Might and Magic games. Hmm. You, they would be recommended down here, or at least you'd think they would be. Hmm. Let's see. We can we can search this and find out. Hmm. We're not moving very fast. We never really are. Interesting. There's Dark Messiah Might and Magic and Might and Magic Heroes and Heroes of Might and Magic and Heroes of Might and Magic some more and Might and Magic Clash of Heroes which is a third different style of gameplay. So yeah, there's quite a few there. But take note that a lot of these Might and Magic games also are mixed reviews, so they're not super popular um, either. And there's such a huge time commitment to play the Heroes of Might and Magic series that I could probably never cover it. Next we have a game called Hieroglyphic. I think I just opened this because we're not looking at H's. Hmm. This looks like it might have been interesting in its cutscenes, but the top-down, cheap 
pixel art enemies uh, for a roguelike this looks pretty boring and the reviews seem to imply this too hmm. horribly slow enemy turns hmm. slow AI just slowing down the game like honestly I didn't even really need to scroll down and look at the reviews if it's that mixed but I'm trying to be trying to be generous here next we have Papo and Yo and it's kind of weird like I, I have no problem of playing the anime panty game but I kind of have a fear that I would have to get over to play Papo and Yo uh, because this game while I don't believe it says it anywhere I don't think that there's a trigger warning here it is it, it is this fantasy game where you're in this fantasy world uh, but this monster is like the, an analogy of the character you're playing as who's a child's drunk abusive father and so it gets into that um, this is also I believe made by like a Spanish developer so always want to try and support developers from different parts of the world who, because they have different perspectives on life and different experiences on life and thus they can create different styles of art um, but yeah there, there definitely is uh, issues certainly that I'd have to get over but I definitely get over it in fact this should be at the top of my wish list and um, because it is overwhelmingly positive at 95 percent hmm. so that's the first game we've decided to put at the top of the wish list um, otherwise it's a puzzle platformer if you ignore the story let's move forward though I don't really need this to linger too much on it let's move on next we have a game a point and click adventure game called paradigm I'm a sucker for point and click adventure games this one looks like it's pretty surreal and crazy but by the art style um, so until I'm willing, until I'm, I've burnt myself out on playing point-and-click adventure games, uh, I'm really not going to remove any from the wish list. They're just going to stay there. And I probably will play them all. Uh, inherently, point-and-click adventure games center a lot around the story. The more story in a video game, the more I can criticize, the less I have to push buttons. Uh, if I'm playing something that is just a brainless first person shooter like Call of Duty for the most part um, not a lot of story to, to, to say or talk about there uh, it's just about the shooting, it's just about the aiming, it's just about the gameplay mechanics um, which I can criticize those elements but I prefer a better story in games over just repetitive actions this one is a brand new game, Paradox of the Cryptomancers. I'm not 100% sure that this isn't an asset flip game. When I put it on the wish list, I was not sure about it then. And it only has like 8 user reviews now, so unless the 8 user reviews uh, are terrible, which it seems like they are, uh, Yeah, I'm seeing a pretty high negative ratio here. Uh, seems like seems like the this game is not of a level of quality to compare to its graphics, and inherently, it's probably an asset flip. This is what you can get certainly, and what you can do if you are buying pre-made assets and you have even a moderate amount of skill in placing artistically those assets 
there are definitely some red flags like how these textures and this scene looks completely uh, worse than all the other scenes or how this scene looks completely unrelated to the previous scene or this scene looks completely unrelated to the previous scene like are you in a modern day world or are you in some kind of magical fantasy land or are you in a medieval times dungeon uh, or are you jumping between all of them um, and this is a game that doesn't have any any other games I think made by this developer uh, but it did feel like it might have been a puzzle game a mist clone prob probably if it is the idea I think of what it's trying to do but it's not succeeding well enough to stay on the wish list there's a lot of you know failures to launch as far as video games and that's almost certainly going to be a game like that next we have parallax which is a black and white puzzle game where i believe your perspective changes how you where you go there was a somewhat similar game that came out that i've covered that um i cannot remember the name of um, Hmm. And it, it, the game I covered didn't have just the black and white element. It had colors and there, there were some other things you were doing. But similar concepts. This is very striking with its sharp details. So yeah, you walk through a world and then you're in the dark version. And then you walk through the world again. And you're shifting things around so it's kind of almost a simplistic concept of rearranging a, a world the fact that you're jumping through things is, is a little surprising most of the time puzzle games like this do not involve like maneuvering your body in any way uh, that puts a very different spin on it. Hmm. It'd be interesting in playing a game like this to determine whether the black and white actually was necessary and helped or whether it was simply an artistic choice that, that mm, really didn't add anything to it. But yeah, I'm, no reason why this is getting removed from my wish list. Now, at a certain level, this is a 2015 game. If 22 and e ran or roll or rolled around, and Toasty Games hasn't announced a new game, I'm gonna just generically assume that they've abandoned their developer name and maybe gotten out of the video game business completely. Uh, that doesn't really mean a lot unless a game is in early access and I'm considering playing it. Uh, but I give people Four years. Four years is long enough to at least announce a new game. Let's see. Next we have a hidden object game that doesn't seem like it's part of a series. And I have so many hidden object games. I think we can remove this one. Um, this isn't made by uh, or published by Big Fish Games so the price is actually pretty low for it but paying for the cheap hidden object games is not really the way to do it uh, the hidden object games on Steam are overpriced by far Big Fish Games releases like a collector's edition every week that is $12.99 and it's a collector's edition of a game that's basically never been on Steam before so they're just labeled as collector's editions so that they can bump the price up and even if it is the average price of $9.99 for a hidden object game, you're still paying a lot of money for games that aren't super long. And if there was a time on this, I'd imagine it is probably just three hours at most. You know, that's, that's a lot of money for what is usually pretty generic simplistic gameplay 
and they'll trick you certainly they'll put a lot of money and polish into to having cutscenes that show off characters that look good but the vast majority of the game actual gameplay is things like this where it's a single screen you're sitting on for many many minutes and there's not that many screens in the first place you could look at this developer and see that this is from a developer who has made a Rambo the video game Baker team and that's mixed and then two other games that are not reviewed well so it's in, it's in bad company as far as that game the publisher on the other hand puts it sort of in good company but not great company so yeah paranormal state poison springs can be removed I need to remove quite a few of the um, of the um, hidden object games on the wish list so this is this Rambo game like questionable whether Rambo really has relevance you, whether you need to talk about the Rambo games I would say there might be two or three Rambo games that were made and they all kind of sucked and just because they're a movie license doesn't mean that they need to be played this is an on rail shooter with quick time events let's see what the reviewers are saying uh, hmm. Hmm. Extremely bad audio. They've taken the audio from the movies and put it in the game. Live scenes from the movie. Hmm. Let's see what else. Why can't we buy this anymore? Oh, is this not even available for purchase? Oh yeah, it isn't. Uh, so this is one of the few games that are on Steam that are just not available for purchase. Well, that makes that a really easy decision whether or not I'm going to buy this game. I think, generally speaking, if a game is not available for purchase, there might be some way you could find a Steam key out there through some third-party site and hope it hasn't been activated already but that's pretty risky and certainly not worth doing for a bad Rambo game they probably removed it because it was so bad but to be fair none of the Rambo games have been very good um, next we have Parkitect which is a early access game from 2016 and a roller coaster tycoon clone it's rated very positively and i know that roller coaster tycoon i think the at least one version on steam is not that not that positively reviewed and it's missing some desired features um i tried to play Skylines, which is a SimCity clone, and it couldn't be played. I think I probably don't like simulator games like this anyways. So, I think that's part of the subjective reason why I'd remove this, but I also think just the fact that it's, um, hmm, it's an unfinished game after this amount of time hmm. yeah the negative reviews aren't saying anything terrible from what I'm saying but this is a 2016 game they've they've had a couple years and this is the only game that they, they've ever made so that's another game I think I'm perfectly fine to remove. Like this very well might be the best best option, but I doubt it. Hmm. Maybe you just jump up the prison architect. 
I mean, that that's a f finished game for the most part. Um, let's see if, if we can find... City Skylines is very positive. Uh, my main problem with City Skylines, though, was, was the fact that I'm watching and playing games from a TV that's 10 feet across the room, and the text was too small to play uh, for me. Like, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Platinum. Yeah. So, this is rated very positively. That's the one to have instead. If I am going to play one Roller Coaster Tycoon game, probably should be the legitimate one. Yep. 88% uh, positive. So, I I'm actually surprised. I thought people didn't like something something hmm and SimCity 4 seems to be positive too hmm Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 is very positive hmm Planet Coaster maybe that's the better one to play hmm. if I was gonna play one of these it's probably the only one I'd play I really thought that this had been treated badly, but I guess I'm thinking of something else. Hmm. Thrillville off the rails. Hmm. It's an Atari game. Hmm. hmm. There you go. Roller Coaster Tycoon World from 2016 must have been what I was thinking about. And the Tycoon Collection. It's only mixed reviewed. So yeah, let's keep moving. Let's keep keep moving forward. SimCity Deluxe is 66% more recently so people people might have some problems hmm. yep I'm gonna leave all these sim games on the wish list and I'm gonna probably have to come back at some point I doubt, seriously, I'd want to go through the entire history of the roller coaster series. That that seems kind of ridiculous, but I'd probably be willing to play whatever the newest one is and the best looking one is. Uh, that very possibly is this Frontier Development Planet Coaster game uh, from the developer of. Jurassic World Evolution. It's kind of funny that Jurassic World Evolution I know wasn't reviewed very well. Uh, Thrillville Off the Rails is from 2007. So yeah, you probably need some nostalgia to play some of these older games. Although this one doesn't even seem like it is a pure simulation game. It seems like there are many games at least inside of it which that might be a smart move but this game from 2016 is definitely mostly negative it's, we can see why but then it's gonna get removed like I, I don't need to play bad versions of games will not load um, Let's see, it seems like they lowered the price and moved on to releasing older, better games. People are really unhappy. Hmm. So many attraction f uh, attractive features from Ro Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is missing. It's as if they were reverse developing the product and brand. 
Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this game was being in development at the same time as Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. A lot of not very helpful negative reviews, but a lot of negative reviews. And once you see the the vast majority of people are not having fun, even if they can't articulate it very well, that's a problem. 26% positive is incredibly, incredibly low. And see what would this bundle this bundle would include the same game DLC and that game and just roller coaster 2 and uh, roller coaster 1 deluxe all right back to games starting with the letter P I'm looking at adding more games still we have party hard from tiny build Let's see. It's a pixel graphics stealth strategy game. Hmm. So you're trying to ruin parties by any means. This, sorry, I, I've read that. Party Hard is Tiny Build's award winning stealth strategy game about ruining parties by any means. Which this might be an interesting thing. Um, it feels almost like it's a updated version of Neighbors from Hell, which is another game on the wish list where you're trying to ruin your neighbor's day or actively hurt him. Um, inherently, I I imagine that there's only a few scenarios. And um, see, this doesn't seem like you're you're causing traps or anything this seems like it is a straight up you're murdering people game Let's see is that what you're doing hmm So, so it seems like it's somewhat built around the idea of not causing a panic. Hmm. We're getting spotted. Hmm. I don't know. I'm a little iffy on this game, honestly. But, yeah, I'll put it on the wish list and then probably never decide to, to play it, frankly. The, there is a slight problem with the, the pixel graphics and being so zoomed out with the camera. I, I very much appreciate for the game to, uh, for games to have the camera zoomed in a lot more and show a lot more detail. And here you can see there's very repetitive sprites. Hmm. Yeah. Let's move on. Uh, next we have Passparto, the Starving Artist, which is a painting game where you actually paint and then uh, I'm not sure how much of an actual gameplay mechanic there is in it as far as how the game judges your paintings uh, but then you sell your paintings and eventually you get um, enough money to move forward in the storyline so it's for the most part I would say a basic MS Paint uh, system you're not you're not going to be doing major levels of Photoshop tricks and and things like that. You're not going to have layers or or things. Um, so this trailer in particular is a little deceptive in in the level of quality your paintings are probably going to come out as. Hmm. And then it really does beg a question about whether if you enjoyed the idea of this game maybe you would just enjoy drawing 
in general instead of paying ten dollars for it uh, let's look at the negative reviews because there have been some recent ones won't start on my laptop let's see let's see it's a very easy game it's very short let's see this game is much less enjoyable than what it looks like I only got this game because I enjoyed watching youtubers play it and inherently that's a problem with a lot of games uh, no undo button or option it, it never matters what you paint the same guy will call it ugly and 10 minutes later buy it too little amount of color to choose between should add color well. And you know what? This game really is on my wish list because I saw other, other, either YouTubers or mainstream video game media covering it. I believe it was Giant Bomb that covered it. It's three to nine hours of gameplay. I kind of don't think I like the gameplay mechanic of making me paint. And it's probably worse than a simplistic kids paint by numbers games which often there are very many low effort games on Steam that are paint by numbers uh, games and I, I, I kind of feel like this is worse and then this next game they created is completely different yeah well I think I can easily remove this because you're not gonna miss out on anything really if you want to open paint and just paint you can do that for free on like any Windows game let's see what velvet swing is I'm gonna drink some water now might be a good time to take a break and pause the video yourself Hmm. So I'm looking at this game, and the swinging idea seems slightly interesting, but it could also be incredibly annoying. Um, what well, it has a hundred levels and a level editor. I wanted to see if it was in VR because this this could be a VR game, but it probably caused people to be motion sick. Hmm. The, the reason I think this would be annoying is that I bet there's no checkpoints. I bet as soon as you fail, you have to start the whole level again. I bet the levels, because of that, are particularly short. Um, when we're looking at this trailer, you, you may notice that... Um, well, that wasn't a video trailer. That was just an animated GIF. They, they're jumping from scene to scene to scene. You're, you've yet to see anything that is more than just the briefest of distances away from from the starting point hmm. yeah it seems like each level would be done incredibly fast so 100 unique levels don't seem that interesting i guess since this is a brand new game too i could just put it on the fall list but uh, even doing that is actually very generous um, it feels like what flame ball games is is they're they're trying to make a good game but they they kind of lack the ability to make a big meaty good game and so then they're making these single a style games that are the that feel very indie and feel very short let's see I guess I should close this tab too like I don't have I never designed a good system here as far as what a open tab means next we have this game path to Me mezzanine 
Um, I don't have to really decide whether I want to play this game or not because it's a brand new game and it came and it's uh, thus it can just be moved to the fall list. Uh, I recall this game it looks slightly interesting if we can skip this so it's you're walking and then you rotate the world and that helps you get to puzzle solutions but um, it, it's like a really interesting art style but when I first saw it it seemed like it wasn't finished and it seemed like there 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 isn't much of a game otherwise Let's see Let's see if we can see a review of it mm. oh hmm So we have like one negative review and then a bunch of positive ones. That's certainly enough to leave it on the wish list. Don't know if this developer's made anything else either. They made King Lucas, which is a mixed reviewed game. Alright, moving on. Next we have Pathologic 2, which is part of the Pathologic series. Uh, this game I don't believe is out yet so this can be on the follow list too pathologic series is a questionable horror survival maybe somewhat of a walking simulator game but it seems like there is definitely a niche fan base for the pathologic series um, you can see pathologic Classic HD is 85% positive of 725 reviews. Um, I'm not sure you could get the non-HD version on Steam and even looking at the HD version the graphics do not look amazingly good. Uh, so there clearly has to be something here. Um, it could be maybe this is a little bit like Silent Hill and there's just such a desire to play Silent Hill. Yeah, right now, discounted for $1.29. That's a pretty good deal. Um, since I think at least some of the source code of Silent Hill was lost, there, there really isn't going to ever be PC re-releases of that game unless it's just made from scratch, which would probably not be too hard to do. Uh, in fact, it probably wouldn't be too hard to just decompile the the games directly and and make a new version of it. Uh, but yeah, I, I seriously doubt that a lot of the earlier Silent Hill games would ever come to PC. And in the same way that Nintendo games will almost certainly never come to PC. So so we're left with. Can we find a clone that might be as good? And often the answer is we can find a clone, but it's it's not quite as good. Sometimes, on rare occasions, there are clones of games out there uh, on Steam that are better, but not not a ton of times. Um, for as much as you'll get better graphics and uh, better frame rates on a PC game, you don't tend to have PC exclusives that that are written better and 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 made made better than console games. Moving on, next we have a game called uh, Pato Box. I don't remember this, so it's probably was added very recently. It's a surreal boxing quest where you are a duck. You play as a duck. Uh, I don't have to really decide on this game right now. This can just be on the follow list. I desperately, speaking of uh, Nintendo clones that we want on PC, I w desperately would love a Punch-Out clone. And I think this might be somewhat 
sort of like that. Again, questionable if the black and white element adds anything or takes away from the perspective. Next we have Pavilion, which is labeled as a puzzle adventure game, isometric puzzle. I kind of like the art style, but that is a lot of green on one screen. And then over here you have a lot of orange on one screen. Um, see how this actually plays. It's a fourth person puzzle adventure. Indirectly guide the unknown main character through the puzzle narrative leveling levels by manipulating the surrounding environment. Oh, so... So you move things the the character moves himself that's sometimes interesting it also seems to have toby eye tracking so you could play the game without using your hands hmm. i feel like when toby eye tracking and some of the other systems similar to that first came out there was a, a sales pitch that this would be for people who have who are like paralyzed from the neck down or have no use of their hands for some other reason. I've not seen in probably the 10 years that those softwares have been available any real adoption or any real world case where that is actually the, uh, possible. I think uh, with the exception of the actual eye tracking software uh, that paralyzed people use to speak and communicate and control things. Uh, I haven't seen a video game example where it works. And you probably could do it in something like a Telltale game, something that's very slow and doesn't have a, or at least doesn't need to have a timer on it. But once you add the usual video game mechanic of you only have a few seconds to hit the right button, uh, that becomes close to impossible. Hmm. I'm really not getting a lot about this game, but I'm willing to bow to the masses if it's 71% positive. It doesn't have a ton of reviews. This might be a bit of a hidden gem. Uh, this is in a bundle where I know I already own back to bed so it might be cheap to cheaper to buy the bundle at some point hmm. we could look at the reviews it's fakely deep uh, let's see no mouse control in the game where the controls where the player only controls a cursor Controlling via a keyboard is like attempting to shoot a moving target while riding a wild horse. I don't get Dev's excuse about difficulties in mouse control implement. Hmm. So I was consumed by anger and cried loud with frustration. Wow. Let's see. Puzzles are fairly obtuse. I hope it changes deep. But currently, guesswork. I'm trying to skim skim these without reading the entirety of these. It does have several 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 limitations. The core mechanic is moving a cursor to interact with objects, but the mouse cannot be done to do this. The simple interaction means that the puzzles are easy. On the easy side, even the hard ones are more of a matter of precision timing or smart navigating instead of logical brain twisters. For the price, it's a very short game. I finished it in just over two hours. The story is implicit rather than explicit, but this means you're wandering around the ruins without a strong sense of who you are or why you're here or what you want. Worst of all, just as you start piecing it together and we think we might be going on chapter one is over and now you have to wait and likely pay for experience in chapter two hmm yeah looking at these negative reviews 
Wow, it seems like what they probably did is they were programming directly for the Toby Eye a tracker and and that somehow left them with such a bad state for a game they didn't have mouse support like that that's really crazy though by default mouse support should work in some form or factor and see this was supposed to have chapter 2 out as DLC in 2018 were Almost at the end of 2018, and that's not out. Um, yeah, I think Pavilion can be removed. It, it looks pretty, and certainly pretty looking games will sometimes trick me into... Uh, into putting them on the wish list, but I usually don't spend the time to look at the reviews and, and see, hey, is, is this game really worth playing? Um, did this have any kind of Metacritic or Open Critic reviews? Apparently not. So yeah, Pavilion can be removed. And if that's PAV, we probably are now close to the ends of the, the PA series. Now, Paw Patrol on a roll is a Nickelodeon kids game unless I am totally wrong and uh, this is somehow just by default stolen all of this and uh, all of this assets all of this content and they, they actually didn't license it from Nintendo but it seems like people are having fun on this and you don't see this this is the first instance I've ever seen of trolling by tags on on a steam game but it's tagged as a psychological horror game with sexual content I seriously seriously doubt Park Patrol which is a game a cartoon series for like one-year-olds is a psychological horror and has sexual content Let's see. And then at that point. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. We have a negative review here that says. Hmm. Says they don't like it at all. I don't know. Uh, inherently, since this is a new game, I can just put it on the wish list. But the trolling with the tags, see, like I don't know if this negative review is a, is a troll or not. Somebody paid it for 5.7 hours, but uh, that still may be a troll. But with the trolling of the tags alone, here you're getting recommendations of anime games instead of kids games, uh, which again is just like an issue with the the Steam recommendation engine, which is very generic. So we could look at this developer. This is the same developer who made the Ben 10 game, another cartoon in Hotel, Hotel Transylvania. So they're trying to make kids games. This is, and I think they have the license. Uh, publishers publishing a bunch of kids games. Um, but yeah, I guess all I have to do is put this on the wish list or the follow list. Uh, very possible I would never cover this game but I do have a slight desire to cover kids games uh, parents in particular uh, parents of very young kids this is E from everyone according to that um, are struggling certainly to find games for their kids to play uh, particularly on Steam there, there really isn't a lot of them and in general as somebody who doesn't who hasn't watched any of Paw Patrol 
My general understanding is it is just a city of dogs and the dogs are all first responders and they go on little missions and save the day. And it, it's really just that simple. Next we have Pawn of the Dead which is another new game. Uh, it is like a I think it's selling itself as a zombie chess game so the black pieces can infect the white pieces and you're always playing as the white pieces and turn you turn them into zombies and, and work for the other side uh, in a slightly interesting concept the graphics are a little rough certainly but it doesn't look too bad to at least watch the followers on it uh, let's see next we have pause a shelter 2 game um, which is a standalone single-player adventure platformer set in the world of shelter 2 uh, the shelter series is a game where you play as the animals seeking shelter and trying to survive I'm not 100% certain that I would want to play the sh shelter series because I think it's just a little too generic in its gameplay mechanics and a little too long let's see this is two to eight hours to play this this side story um, and it has a slight low polygonal art style to it which is slightly slightly a issue I would say I would prefer if the shelter series was much more polished and looked realistic hmm. let's see yeah it's not not a lot there in that video as far as actual actions, I, I really don't think you do too much. There, there are times, I would assume, in which you hunt and get food. But it, it's kind of like a pretend you're an animal walking simulator game uh, series. And we have a game called Tiny Echo from this developer. And then Meadow, which looks like it might be something else then pan pan and then shelter 2 came out in 2015 and then the blue flame with mixed reviews there was a lot of streamers that played this the shelter series too that's part of part of why why it's probably so popular like the we really are in a weird position right now where a lot of games on Steam are popular because streamers made them popular and uh, like Five Nights at Freddy's is a great example there of a game that really did not deserve to become popular and did. Uh, but now I think that we've been through it for several years. People are starting to wise up and say, actually, I don't want to buy this game. I actually don't want to... Uh, Let's see. So this game, Meadow, is uh, more of a Second Life clone. And there's basically they're saying a form in games clothing. The online fable experience lets all the new fans of Shelter series come together and encounter a peculiar world. Hmm. So it's it's kind of a MMO MOBA online multiplayer game. Well, I'm not going to cover a multiplayer game. It's it's just really really hard to review multiplayer games. So that version. Interesting that they they've released at least four games under the Shelter series, and and two of them have been spinoffs. Pan Pan is looks like it's a puzzle game. It's rated pretty positively. I'll add that to the wish list. 
Shelter 2 is rated very positively. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. See, I, I'm not sure how long these games are, though. Two to six hours. So, yeah, you're, you're not going to have a super long experience and I'm not sure you're gonna have a very varied experience it may be the same for everybody Let's see blue flamingo on the other hand is mixed reviewed and it's just a shoot 'em up game which is a new uh, phrase I've learned uh, and I've, I've known these styles of games certainly but I didn't catch the name or the description looks like it is handcrafted models which is probably an insane way to make a game and people aren't super hot on it so I'm gonna close that tab shelter one is very positive um, let's see so you play as a badger in the first game and you play as like a uh, cougar in the second one it seems and then PID I may own this game maybe not it looks like it's a puzzle platformer yeah I'd be willing to put this on the wish list so they have quite a few games might and delight as the developer they have quite a few games that are worth playing but a few that aren't uh, speaking of games that maybe aren't worth playing we have Payday the Heist, um, which this is, I believe, Payday 1, which was very popular. And then there was a big problem of microtransactions in Payday 2. And apparently, Payday 2 is not even... Let's see if we can find it. Payday the Heist is not... Is Payday 2 actually not even available for purchase anymore? Hmm. Maybe it was the Heist DLC that was the problem. No. It definitely was a problem because people were not happy with Payday 2. There you go. Payday 2. By a completely different developer. Um... They weren't happy with it originally. I guess maybe now they've finally figured out something. They've, they've changed it, gotten rid of the the microtransactions. Um, they're, they're certainly still, even though this is a 2013 game, they're still trying to make it work as a game. H3, H3 character pack. Really? Ridiculous. Let's see if we can see some negative ones. Hmm. Hmm. Need to buy the Ultimate Edition, no buts, no. Not, not half. 70% of the game's lifespan and content is there. And trust me, it's a better deal than the $200 mess it, there was before. Secondly, they screwed up a lot of things. Uh, it's cops spawn in the hundreds. Hmm. They hand fist cops and everything. Heist or not heist. This is not a heisting game. You spend less time robbing a bank and pulling off the next big event than you do working as mercenaries. Whether it be assassinations, framing, gang wars, conversation. Um, so yeah, this, this feels a lot like a GTA wannabe series. Hmm. And, um... I'm not 100% sure I want to play it. But I can put it on the wish list and then... Then decide later. Because it's probably never going to be a real big issue. Um, yeah, 
And then this developer went on to make Dead by Daylight, which kind of succeeded for a brief time, but then really is, is slowly dying. John Wick Chronicles. That might be an interesting thought. And play John Wick movie tie-in games. Yeah, Payday. Payday 2. I'll think about playing it, but really, I would need a fan to tell me to play the game. And this is the John Wick Chronicles as a VR experience only. So I'll close that and then move on. Next, we have a game called Payroll. Let's see. This is what a game would be like if it was a 20 minute office simulator in Windows 95. Why was this game on my wish list? I, I have no idea why this game would have ever been added to the wish list. I get the feeling that sometimes I add games and then it just messes up and adds a different game. The, the, it would also probably explain some gaps in in the wish list. Like this developer hasn't made anything that looks interesting. Like this is obviously a very low effort game. Like I literally have no reason whatsoever for this to to be on the wish list. Uh, next we have PC Building Simulator. We don't really have to get into this one too too much because I talked about it in the previous episode. It's it's kind of a lot better improved now because it's it's working with uh, actual video game hardware, uh, computer hardware sellers to have actual products. Originally the game was was not going to have any real world products at all. Uh, so it wasn't much of a simulator as far as hey I want to actually simulate the experience of putting together a computer before I go and buy a computer. Uh, this probably still doesn't isn't going to have the most update products and it's still only going to be limited to some of the the developers um, and the game itself really isn't about building computers as much as it is repairing computers and most of repairing computers is running virus scans if you're doing even that much um, but it is way better than what it started with and it's still early access I guess theoretically because it's early access I could put it in the follow list like I should uh, I'm almost certainly gonna have to go and do a second scan of the wish list and just say show me all the early access games on my wish list because uh, that none of them should be on on the wish list uh, so yeah we can move it over to the follow list but I probably do want to play it Let's see, next we have a game called Peace Death. It's an arcade simulator with difficulties. In the game you play as a reaper working for the boss death. You send clients to heaven, hell, or purgatory. Hmm. Interesting idea. How does it actually play? Hmm. Hmm. Seems like it's got a lot of memes, uh, or references at least, of characters. And that idea seems slightly interesting, I guess, that, hey, let's have a bunch of characters from a bunch of different uh, references and decide whether we send them to heaven and hell, um, or purgatory. But how does it really play? Are you just clicking is this just an, a thumbs up thumbs down situation are the characters talking to you while you're asking questions hmm hmm yeah this kind of does seem like it is probably a 
sort of simplistic up and down button controls like you're just probably pressing left and right and that's it hmm if it gets cheap though I, I wouldn't be too upset with it um, says it's three to six hours of gameplay has this developer made anything else hmm See another game. And another game. So yeah, there's a couple of other games from this developer that might be interesting too. This looks like a sort of Zelda clone, but I would bet you just are running around um killing things. I, I bet this isn't a full adventure game. I bet you don't go into dungeons and fight things. It's probably closer to a top-down twin-stick shooter game. But it looks interesting, certainly. It's free. Hey, price is right there. And then this one is 99 cents. It's a, mm, shooting uh, high noon style game. Yeah, this doesn't look that bad either. I'm probably being too generous. Next we have Peggle Knights. I think I probably would be willing to play Peggle Knights. I covered Peggle or Peggle Deluxe. Eh, these PopCap games are really old. They have some small amount of relevancy. Um, there's not been a lot of games out there that have replaced them completely. PopCap Games hasn't made anything new in a very long time, so I assume they either changed their name or went out of business. Uh, next we have Penny Arcades on the Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness, which is also just called Rain Slick Precipice, or, well actually it's just called Precipice of Darkness for episode 1 and 2, and there's 4 episodes on this uh, RPG game that's a parody based on Penny Arcade comics that were coming out at the time. I'm not sure if the comics really has changed that much. Um, it's weird because the Penny Arcade people started at least if they don't continue if they aren't still running the Penny Arcade uh, Expo known as PAX, which is uh, several of the biggest conventions for video games so it, it's a I'd probably have to make some small bit of disclosure if I was gonna um, play this game in the sense that I'd be criticizing a game that is created by celebrities in the video game world and, and it, it does probably actually nothing to disclose actually but it's just weird it's a weird thing uh, there's been incidences before where games were made by other youtubers and and um, it it's questionable whether they actually are relevant or not um, inherently it's more the fault of those other youtubers for crossing the line from being uh, well critics of video games into being creators of video games which is a line I don't think you should ever cross I think if you're gonna be a critic you're gonna, gonna be a critic for the rest of your life or move into a completely different field um, but as for this I'll leave it on the wish list it's probably too long and probably not that good um, I know there was some controversy uh, some small controversy uh, that has popped up every now and then different controversies have popped up now and then with Penny Arcade so uh, there might be some issues there but I doubt it and then in the same way we have episode 4 it's an episodic game there's reason to not play it for that let's see if we have any time on this 
This came out in 2013 too, so I'm not sure it's really that relevant. Next we have Perception, which is a mostly positive horror game where you're blind. Um, honestly, I think Perception might be a good blind horror game where there have been quite a few that take the idea and they overplay it and, and you basically can't see anything for most of the game, um, which in inherently causes what I call dark screenshot syndrome where you, you, you're hiding a ton of uh, a ton of content that you didn't animate because you, you made the character blind. Here, while I'm watching the video, I'm seeing wind, I'm seeing uh, drips of water, I'm seeing a lot of things causing the screen to be very visible. Uh, whereas, a lot of times it's just an outline. Uh, Skinner Sombre might be a good example of that. And, and I, I'm going to try to keep perception in the back of my mind and say, hey, this looks good. This looks like it's worth playing. Maybe I just play Perception. Maybe I don't play some of these other ones. Um, is there anything else to say about this, though? I guess you don't really have to say anything. Just move on. Next we have Perceptions of the Dead which is a free-to-play indie casual horror game really is it an adventure hmm. looks like it's probably more of a uh, visual novel and it's definitely a unique art style very western art style if there is something as a western art style hmm don't really see a lot here as far as what the gameplay is but it's also free uh, there's a fan pack that you can buy for $2.99 two new episodes available in Perceptions of the Dead 2 hmm. I'm trying to skip through here yes this looks very much like a visual novel Hmm. But it may not be too bad. It says it has full audio. That's always helpful. It almost seems like uh, it's a ghost hunting group that are going out to places trying to find ghosts. Uh, moving on, Perceptions of the Dead 2 came out this year. And normally I'd put it on the fall list because it doesn't make the 25 review ratio, but I think we're safe to leave it where it is. Hmm. It seems like the second game, at least, are episodic games, so... Hmm. Maybe the you just follow through the story and... It, it's not a game where you really could play it multiple times. Hmm. I don't remember ever seeing this game, but that doesn't really mean anything. Let's see, this is from a developer who has made some other. Uh, made some other visual novel games so so they're definitely going in their own direction let's see and i got put in the wrong place because uh, of a plugin i have that stops me from opening the same tab twice so it put me back to the tab that I just tried to open a second time. So apologies for that. But just got a tab forward and we'll get there in a second. 
Yeah, Perceptions of the Dead 2 can stay on the wish list. Let's see, next we have Perfect Angle, a puzzle based on optical illusions. I kind of would love a game like that. Unfortunately, you can see it's 51% positive. So I bet the mechanic is broken. I bet it doesn't work at all. Uh, or, like, that's the only thing I could guess is the reason. Now, often I will complain about games calling themselves something simple, like Perfect Angle would be a moderately simple name, and, and I'd say, well, you need a colon and a subtitle. Uh, the colon and subtitles probably shouldn't be just a direct <laughs> description. Um, of what the game is. Hmm. It doesn't look terrible. Hundred optical illusions that you have to manipulate. And in all fairness, you could probably buy just a bunch of Unity assets and by default pretty easily create a game like this where you're you know trying to find the perfect angle maybe the game doesn't tell you what you're actually looking for that could be the part of the problem um, let's see what our views are let's see buy shadowmatic on your iOS device instead one of this like game to like this game I really did Love the concept of rotating objects to reveal the shapes, however, the game falls way short. It feels like something somebody made in Blender, transitions are low resolution, Blender being a 3D modeling software that's open source, plastic looking low frame rate. The levels range from super easy to are you freaking kidding me with no co coherent progression, easy and level hards are all thrown together in no order. pay real money to get hints or wait five minutes on each level to get a free hint hmm some microtransactions hmm so yeah apparently that's not the game it's not it's not good quality and unfortunately the recommendation engine almost certainly will not recommend anything close to it I bet somewhere on Steam there is a game like this that is good but there's no way to know how this developers made several games that look uninteresting to me hmm. so we'll remove that from the wish list and we need to keep keep up momentum uh, we have perfect universe play with gravity which is 13 positive reviews hmm I'm gonna scroll down and just see what the reviews are and make a decision here hmm. it's four different mini games the first three basically gravity challenges using either a man or an alien and this spaceship hmm. control is bad too frustrating because of bad control massive performance problems yeah I think this is yeah another game that can be removed I doubt this developer has made anything else. And I suspect this publisher hasn't published anything else. Oh, they have. But not particularly the greatest of games. So another game that can be removed. Some keep up momentum, gain momentum. Next we have Perils of Man, which is a point-and-click adventure game. I'm a sucker for point-and-click adventure games. I question 
why sometimes they are animated in CG 3D uh, instead of just the old school 2D animation style. But, you know, even in 2015, maybe CG was cheaper at that point. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's big business in buying 3D assets that had been uh, used or were in development for like a movie and then the movie funding fell out and you just took those 3D assets and repurposed them into a video game. And that might be the case or you know maybe the 3D assets were used in the movie but the movie only aired in China or someplace and so you can just reuse the assets perfectly fine somewhere else. There's nothing here that looks terrible. Verco Games is a publisher I recognize at least. Hmm. So yeah, leave that on the wish list. Next we have a game called Pertinence which is mixed. And this is like a simple puzzle game. So at mixed reviews, I think I can immediately just remove this. It's not really necessary to come down and look for the negative reviews. Hmm. Too many sections that require perfect timing and my timing sucks. I well, that, that's enough to desell me on this game. Honestly, I didn't even need to read one review. Mixed reviews from a 2016 game. It's never going to get any more reviews anyways. So, pertinence can be removed. I have a lot of these simplistic, minimalistic puzzle games anyways. Next, we have why a game I do not recognize. And I don't even know how you'd pronounce that name. Hmm. Cemetery full of hostile creatures, mixed reviews again. Let's see. Yeah, another game I, I don't know why this would have even been on the wish list. It's from a developer who hasn't developed anything that looks in interesting. I yeah, can't even pronounce the name. I'm gonna remove that. Feels like it's not even in English. Or at least the, the name is in Portuguese. Uh, so in a similar way as the um, Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness games, the Penny Arcade games, we have PewDiePie Legend of the Brofist, um, I'm not sure if it really has relevance, honestly, to play this, or like playing a playing a game built around PewDiePie means uh, means a lot of different things. Like it, you, it's dealing with PewDiePie in every aspect. It's dealing with his fans in every aspect. It would be probably great search engine optimization and that's the real reason why this is on the wishlist and it will stay on the wishlist is that heck if I played this game and put PewDiePie in the title maybe it would get some PewDiePie fans to uh, to watch my videos like I do on occasion on rare occasion keep an eye on what PewDiePie is doing but honestly I'm not uh, I was never a super fan. In fact, I only really became a fan after a major controversy with him and and saw how the news was not really reporting it fairly and was just attacking him for the most part. Not that he he's did nothing wrong, it's just that he was also being attacked for for things that other people in other industries would have not been attacked for at least at that time this game looks fine if it plays well th there's really no reason why I wouldn't want to play it 
You can see this developer hasn't made anything else. Um, but it does get into some weirdness when one YouTuber is covering another YouTuber's game. Let's see. Next we have Phantasmal Survival Horror Roguelike. That's mixed reviews. Again, I, I must have just been really, really generous at some points because these games don't seem like they deserve to be on the wish list but then also this could have been added well no it couldn't have this is a 2016 game i thought it said 2018 yeah no idea i should have seen mixed reviews and not uh, added it excellent concept just too bu buggy it says so that's another game getting removed I guess it's a good thing that so many games are getting removed though because I was afraid at a certain point this was n none of them were going to get removed. We started off pretty slow in this stream, uh, in this video. Next we have Fantasy Star 4 The End of the Millennium. It's a Sega Genesis, uh, Sega Mega Drive Genesis collection game. Uh, boy, there's a lot of them. Uh, that you can get this is a game that I just want to own so I support the industry and then I probably would just use a ROM on an emulator some of these might actually be the ROMs too in emulator so it might be as easy as just copying the file over yourself uh, to something like lib retro l-i-b-r-e-t-r-o uh, I know Fantasy Star Online is super popular, so the, there's probably some reason why this particular game and not all 59 of these games are on the wish list. Probably all 59 of those games should be on the wish list, though. I, it would be easier. And I know that at least some of these games I've gotten for free because Sega gets them out for free um, every now and then. They're nothing super special about how they're being in emulated. Uh, next we have Phantom Brave PC. Phantom Brave has a chance of being one of the JRPG game series that I cover. I guess it really comes down to where Phantom Brave um, continues. Is there a Phantom Brave 2 on PC? Because the graphics here don't look good. This is probably a DS or Vita port. Uh, this probably isn't a brand new game. Uh, let's see. And unless Phantom Brave is the predecessor to the Disgaea series and I was going to play the Disgaea series I'm not sure uh, there's a real reason to play it, again any RPG is a big commitment 34 to 74 hours is not even that big hmm. let's see It apparently was a PS2 game so yeah until I can stop being crippled with indecision as far as the RPGs and JRPGs in my wishlist uh, Phantom Brave will stay on the wishlist uh, I'm not sure it's in the top 10 or not next we have Phantom Breakers which is an anime beat-em-up game it's overall very positive, but it's dropped quite a bit in the last 30 days, so that's questionable. Hmm. There is anything that looks amazingly good here. It seems like a pretty simplistic beat em up game. Um, with, with a, while I usually love the camera to be zoomed in, I, I would say. Go, getting away from what is called the chibi art style, the short, uh, sh short, totally not human art style 
of anime characters. If it had gone for a more tall, realistic art style, swings, kicks, punches would would look better. Zoomed out a little bit more so you could have more enemies on the screen would look better. Hmm. Seems like the beat em up has different paths you can take. Sometimes they do. Two hours to 12 hours of gameplay. Let's see. Still not as good as the PS4 version that was released a few months after the port was. I'd recommend that version of the game if it, if it came to Steam, but this doesn't seem likely to happen. Hmm. I'd currently only recommend it if it was at least 75% or less off. Has nothing else to do but waste a... Um, so this looks like it's just a bad port. In particularly with niche audiences, uh, Xbox One control doesn't work. Uh, that that would be a problem. With with these niche audiences, uh, for games like this, particularly Japanese games, people are very picky, and the bad port will not stand. So yeah, Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds can be removed. And then let's see if maybe this developer did make anything else. Well, they, they moved on to re-releasing Corpse Party and Steins Gates and Visual Novels. Doesn't look like there's another Phantom Breaker game. Yep, people sometimes definitely do feel cheated. Let's look at the publisher. If, if you release a better version on the console after releasing the PC version. The publisher publishes mostly uh, Japanese games of varying content. Hmm. We could see, we can search here and see if there's perhaps a different Phantom Breaker game. No, nothing else is coming up. So yeah, I'll remove that game easily enough. Uh, and I guess at this point having this DLC also makes no sense even though this seems to be rated very positively I wonder why I had the DLC on in the first place probably because um, it, I probably added this to the wishlist earlier in the past couple of weeks. Next we have Phantom Doctrine which is a turn-based stealth game. It's mostly positive. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure I would actually play this game. If we can get any of the screenshots to actually load because it looks a lot like an XCOM clone but I can leave it on the wish list and um, and then decide later. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like an XCOM clone. I think if I'm gonna play an XCOM game, I should just play XCOM. I don't think there's anything better than that that's ever gonna come out. Next we have Phantom Hills, which is oddly more of a um, pixelated roblox looking side of uh, style of game a lot of black areas here a lot of dark screenshot syndrome happening I guess I could put this on the follow list because I'm not 100% sold even though it is over the limit of 25 reviews like I'm at a point where either I would look at the reviews and make a slightly abrupt decision or I give it a I give it a year and come back and so I think I'll be generous to this game and give it a year and come back by putting it on the follow list hmm. Let's see moving on next we have Pharaoh and Cleopatra this is a 1990 game simulation historical game 
maybe I could play this, maybe I couldn't. Kind of a good question would be how many levels and how long does it take to beat the game? Mm. See, we could look at the reviews and just see how many hours are in it. 16 hours, 14 hours, 6 hours, 7 hours. It doesn't seem, seem too terrible. Yeah. So yeah, this can stay on the wish list easily enough. And then we have Pharaoh Rebirth. I, I imagine that there's a few Pharaoh games. Although this one is tagged as a Metroidvania game. It's rated very positively, 93% positive reviews. Hmm. None of these screenshots are loading very fast. Hmm. This looks good enough to leave it. I'm trying to maintain momentum and go forward. So let's let's keep on going. Next we have Pharaonic, which is an RPG side-scrolling game. I kind of need this video to load. Let's watch the video play because I want to see. Um, let's see. says it's a streamlined and challenging combat system that will keep you on your toes for fighting for your life. Hmm, the video's totally not loading. <laughs> uh, I wonder why that is. Too. I don't think there's anything going on with my internet, but maybe there is. Uh, this looks alright. It might get pretty boring pretty quick. It, it kind of looks like almost what you would put on a tablet or a cell phone game. It may very well have been something like that. Um, 11 to 15 hours, 78 on Open Critic. I don't see a reason why I'd remove it. Next, we have Phoning Home. It's 40% now and 71% then. That is a huge difference. And see, this looks like it is definitely stealing some visual aspects from the, a Pixar movie. What was the name of that one? Uh, but it, it didn't look like they were doing a bad job there of, of stealing the art style. Uh, so what are the negative reviews? Got, got to say. Can't recommend this game. Hmm. Physics in this game are plain disgusting. Good luck trying to find out how to climb a mountain and dying every few minutes. For no good reason because of fall damage calculations. Devs managed to completely spoil the whole exploration experienced by a lack of mapping function combined the stress factor of permanent as the mission log says. Five hours wandering through a desert, nothing interesting happened, not fun. Hmm. It was a great game until I hit the deserts. I got very lost with out of map. Hmm. Let's see. So it seems like, if I was to guess, the desert content was added and it was very poorly received. It says seven hours to beat the whole game and... Hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was an early access game and then it got the desert element added and then that became a problem. You can see here, yeah, five hours of wandering around that would be pretty annoying. Well, there, there's definitely two strikes here. One, they're, they're willing to steal content, or, or at least plagiarize, which plagiarism is never accept, acceptable. And two, people don't like the game. And this developer hasn't made anything else either haven't announced anything else Let's see moving on 
We have a game called Photon Cube, which I can just put on the follow list because it's brand new. I don't have to think about it. Next we have a game called Photonic Distress, which I can just put on the follow list because it's brand new. I suppose if you have more interest in these games, you would just have to type in the name yourself into Steam. Yeah, I'm certainly in my head balancing how much of this video is informative and how much of this is just me trying to get work done and clean up the wish list and try to make content while I'm doing this because it has been hours and hours of, of work. This is another Picross game that is I guess free to play with some donation levels. So that doesn't seem too bad. Uh, so I don't see a reason to remove that. Like, theoretically, I could have totally done all of this off screen and just not made content in the same time. But that would have been, this really is going to be at least 30 hours of, of footage. And see, this is just more Picross. Um, so, you know, don't really have a reason to remove it. Probably would never actually buy it. We already looked at PID. Next we have Place of Memory, which this might be interesting and it might not be. See, there, there's definitely some weirdness here. This might be like a a well, I was going to say low effort Chinese game, but it doesn't seem like that actually is the case. All time peak of two people with literally no reviews. Well, Japanese and positive. Hmm. So I imagine this is really, really short. Um, and there's not much to it. But it might be a hidden gem. Although I guess if I'm going to uh, add that to the wishlist and leave that on the wishlist, then we also have to have this other part. Seems like it's probably a Japanese developer trying to be an indie developer. Hmm. It's probably not worth actually having on the wishlist. Though, like, I really don't think that this is uh, I really don't think this is a a game worth worth having. Yeah. So let's go ahead and bring bring these things off the wish list. I'm being too generous. Yeah. This is nowhere near the level of polish as far as a game should be. This is an experiment. This is not something that should be on Steam. This is this is a this is not something you should show to anybody, honestly, for the level of polish. Uh, next we have Peerhead Arcade, which is a VR game so it should be on the follow list anyways um, it looks pretty good for the mini games that I've tried to find um, there's still some chance that I'll find a better version of this like mm, ski ball basketball coin pushers there's more mini games here than what was in the other game I looked at. But uh, you would need VR to play it, and that's what the sucky part about it. This. It's like, why can you not just play this in regular? Like a UFO game here. Hmm. Whack-a-mole, several mini games you very possibly may have not even played.
played something similar to. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually does have a coin pusher game, but definitely getting a lot of a lot of options here. Quite quite a bit of polish for a VR game, particularly since it's only five dollars. Most VR games are really ex expensive. So yeah, if you have VR, I would recommend Pinhead Arcade, Pierhead Arcade. As possibly one of the best arcade games out there, uh, VR games out there. Next, we have something that's brand new called Pig Eat Ball. Don't really need to to do anything with that. I can just put it on the follow list. We're taking way too long. Uh, next, we have Pillars of Eternity. Pillars of Eternity is a isometric RPG. It has some name recognition. Uh, I've heard of it, so um, it's from the developers of Fallout New Vegas, who recently said they probably will never make another Fallout game. And South Park: The Stake of Truth. So there's some relevancy there, too. Um, could look at everything they've made, I suppose. Yep. I think it's pretty easy to just leave this on the wish list. Um, although, before I do that, I do probably want to make sure I have this on the wish list because I might not, but I probably do. Not sure if there's really anything else that I'd want to add. And then there is also weirdness, like how much censoring would I really have to do to play South Park on YouTube? None or a lot. It gets overwhelmingly positive, so I kind of think you probably should play it, but there, there is some, definitely some weirdness there. Um, there might be some censoring I would have to do playing this game too. Um, Pillars of Eternity 2 Dead Fire is at 69% versus 80%, so people are not happy with it for some recent change. Let's see. Hmm. Eventually it became a chore. There's a ton of backtracking. I gave up somewhere in the middle of the DLC without bothering to finish the main game itself. Months after this game is released, it's full of bugs and, and even at the very beginning it takes eternity to reinstall the game so that all the DLC are installed correctly. Even after that, the game is not able to discover save files from the first pillars of eternity. If developers don't want to spend their time on the, the game, why would I? Okay. So maybe I get rid of pillars of eternity at that point let's make a tough decision let's get rid of it it looks to me a lot like a diablo clone style game and if i'm gonna play something why not play diablo 3 or diablo 1 or diablo 2. next we have pinball hd collection which is mixed reviewed and while it's not at the 25 threshold I think that's enough information to tell me this probably doesn't play well even if it might look pretty good so I can remove that from the wish list hmm. next we have pinstripe which I don't know what kind of game this is it's it's being tagged as an adventure dark puzzle game Come on, skip forward. You're just gonna show me a bunch of quotes, aren't you, for the entirety of the video? Maybe this is the video to watch. Hmm. It seems like it's an odd platforming, running, gunning game. Interesting. Hmm. 
An ex-minister ventures through the frozen depths of hell in search of his kidnapped daughter. Oh. When I saw the an ex-minister, I was thinking like a minister of the UK government field. Not a minister as far as a religious field. Hmm. Okay, well, Pinstripe looks weird, certainly. And I'll leave it on. And apparently this developer has not made anything else. And the publisher... Hmm. Has published... Some interesting things. Maybe a couple interesting things. Did we look at this game when we went to the hells? Hmm. So the dungeon. A free to play pixel graphics RPG. And Love is Dead. A zombie puzzle game of sorts. It's a lot of polish on that. That looks really good. Moving on, we have Pit People, which is... What kind of game? I thought it was going to be one of these Riot games where you get a bunch of people to work for you and fight. Kind of like a mosh pit. But I'm not sure that's really what this is. Let's see. If any of these screenshots wanted to load. Hmm. It looks like it has a pretty weird artistic style that might be funny. Like it, it's rated very positively. And and that's that's a good factor. Uh, yeah, it's rated 94% positively. Whatever this game is, it's it's good enough, clearly, to, to play. Hmm. So, in an effort to save time alone, I'm going to just leave this on the wish list and move on. Uh, next we have Pixel Puzzles 2 Space. Hmm. This is a puzzle game um, I don't know why this would have been on the wish list maybe I picked one random of these low effort puzzle jigsaw puzzle games to cover but you can see there's nine different pixel puzzles games of different themes and they're all just kind of the same uh, they just have different themes usually you'll run into puzzle games or slide puzzle games that have a bunch of anime girls as the pictures and and it's questionable to me at least whether they, they even license the pictures. Uh, next we have the Pixel Junk Monsters. This is a tower defense game. Um, it's mixed reviews. I'm gonna remove it. Uh, the Pixel Junk series was used for several different games but I'm not really sure that any of them are actually worth playing. So, yeah. Continue to remove DLC, which I don't know why it was even there in the first place. Hmm. Like, more pixel junk DLC. I, I must have added all the DLC in the, in the thought that I was really going to play this. But nope. Honestly, if I'm going to... If I'm going to play... A tower defense game. It probably would be Orcs Must Die. Uh, next we have Pizza Frenzy Deluxe. Every now and then you run into a game where you're... Running a pizza shop. Generally speaking, I don't want to play games where you're running a business or doing a job. This one's pretty old. It's a pop cap game. Um, 
I'm gonna leave it on the wish list because it's a pop cap game and every now and then you do see a clone of it but usually the clones are pretty bad now this pizza titan ultra is not just running a pizza business though it's also running around destroying buildings in um, flying mechs so so it's it's a it's like crazy taxi basically hmm and it's rated really positively um i guess i could put it to the follow list though and see if it gets some more reviews because it is new or not that new but newer so yeah we'll put pizza titan ultra on the follow list next we have planescape torment i think i already removed this game from my wish list but i haven't reloaded the page on my main wish list in which I'm opening tabs. So I'm gonna just leave this alone. If it's still on the wish list, fine. If I've already removed it, I won't undo my actions. Yeah, a lot of these again look a lot like a Diablo style game, and I don't know why I wouldn't want to just play Diablo. Next we have Planet Alpha. Rated very positively, 83%. Looks like it's a limbo esque style of platforming game, running for your life game. I don't know if limbo really deserves the generic descriptor for these types of games, but I mean, I, I could say maybe Abe's Odyssey esque, but I don't know if that's the right reference either. Hmm. Yep, nothing looks terrible here. It's by Team 17, which is a recognizable uh, company. So move on. Uh, we have Planet of the Apes Last Frontier, which is a movie tie-in, but it's rated mostly positively, so I don't see a reason why I wouldn't want to leave it. It looks like it might be sort of like a Telltale game. Next we have Plankton, which maybe I'd consider removing this. Minimalistic style game, Plankton Simulator. An electric pet generated by math codes. Under your care, it slowly grows and evolves. Hmm. This feels like this might be incredibly, incredibly boring. And that it's just getting the mostly positive reviews it's getting because it's being honest about what it is hmm it, this kind of seems pretty dull and while we are seeing some variety in the lights being used and the bowls being used I'm not really seeing a lot of anything else hmm. I vaguely recall seeing a game like this where you were playing as the plankton and you were eating things. It's 48 minutes long according to how long to beat. It's from a developer who's apparently not made anything else that looks that interesting. I think we can remove that one just fine. Next, we have Play with Gilbert, which is, I think, a kid's game. Uh, hmm. I was not expecting a super fast speedrunning game playing as cats. This is weird, certainly. But it's rated mostly positive. 
So it's, it's probably not too much of a game. You're probably just running around. It feels like the controls would, are awful. And humans are trying to, I think, catch the cat. Hmm. Let's see what the reviews are on this. Let's see if the controls are really bad. Hmm. She lost interest due to hard to reach. Sorry, I'm reading it. it. The basic premise is a third person cat simulator in which you search for fish icons. Cat icons and bizarrely a ninja lady with a golden fish, which really makes no sense in the context of the game. Hmm. The tutorial is confusing. I thought this game would be cute and easy to play. The controls are extremely laggy and it's possible to control the game does not seem to like it was designed well at all. Yeah, I'm taking that same thought too, is that play with Gilbert is unpolished and being sold as a kid's game to hide the fact that actually it's just it's a bad game. Let's see if this developer has made anything else. Um, a game called Star Drop. What is Star Drop? It's an early access space game. This looks pretty. I'll put Star Drop on the fall list. But I'm being very, very generous. See, this is the problem. The follow list next year will just be as big as the. I guess I should close that tab. Uh, it'll just be as big as everything else uh, as the wish list is this year because I'm too generous. Next, we have please don't touch anything 3D. Now it's kind of sucky that this needs to be on my wish list because I already own Please Don't Touch Anything, the original, and all they did was change the graphics to 3D, which does change the game quite a bit, but then that puts me as a video game critic in a weird position where I kind of need to own both games so I could play both games and compare the two, and, and that just seems like that's... It's kind of a terrible way for it to play. Now it does support VR and I get that, but yeah. And they really haven't made anything since then. So this 2015 game gets remade in 3D in 2016 and then they don't do anything else. It's really, as far as on the face of it, the exact same game. Um, or at least moderately the same game so I guess unfortunately they've they've figured out a way for me to put that on the top of my wish list even though I really don't want to give them more money for the same game uh, next we have plug and play which is a surreal black and white crazy game um, this probably is more of a streamers game than anything else it says it has nudity in it I don't know how much of that really there is hmm, I guess maybe we put it at the top of the list because it probably isn't very yeah it's 15 minutes that's an easy easy thing to cover although for 15 minutes at best, the best deal you would have paid would have been a dollar and fifty, so the price is probably way too high. Next, we have a game that's not out yet, so uh, I can just put it in the follow list. This is a pipes game. Clone. Moving on. 
see. New Umbra, Breath of Life is mixed. I think it was mixed even when I added it. Um, this is, I think, a mist like puzzle game. But certainly, people don't seem to like it. Two to three hours. Hmm. Let's see what the problem is. The story. They didn't like the story in that review. Hmm. Hmm. It has apparently ocu poor Oculus Rift negative reviews. So it seems like that this game should be on my wish list. It's just getting negatively reviewed because of poor support. Hmm. And this is the only game this developer's made. Hmm. I have to be careful about paying for this too, certainly. I wouldn't want to pay $20 for it. Moving on. Next we have a game called Poi, P-O-I. It's a Super Mario 64 style clone. Uh, 3D platformer, I guess this would be easier to call it that. Definitely want to play it. It's rated very positively. I'm going to put it at the top of my list. I'd love to play more of these games that look like kids games and actually have some meat to them. Five hours to eight hours of gameplay instead of a lot of kids games being barely 30 minutes worth of gameplay on Steam. And that's still nowhere long enough actually compared to like a Mario game. Uh, this game is brand new for less than a year old at least so I can put this on the follow list. You don't have to decide now. Simplistic puzzle game. I like to play simplistic puzzle games every now and then, but a lot of times I don't finish them. Next, we're probably going to go through a stream of Polybridge games. Uh, Polybridge has some name recognition, so, oh, well, apparently not. Uh, it'll stay on the wish list. Uh, next, we have Pool Panic, which is an adult swim game where it's kind of pool, but it's kind of not um, because the pool balls are getting up and walking around and they walk around based on different rules in, in a weird way it might be a more modernized idea of how pac-man worked where certain ghosts of certain colors would go in different directions and react different ways like so yeah pool party it's crazy it's a it's a joke game but it's it's a good joke game, so I'll leave it on the wish list. Next we have Ports of Call, which rated very positively. It's free to play. It's probably mostly wandering around. Hmm. I really don't know whenever I would actually get around to playing a free to play game because it's kind of just there. What could happen is if this developer came out with a new game, I might do a 30 minute spotlight on their free to play original game. But if you just put out a free to play game and, and there's no relevancy to it, which that's the problem is this game, Port of Call, is not related to anything. There, it, it wasn't a huge success. It wasn't talked about by a bunch of people. Uh, it really just goes to the bottom of the bottom of the list. Like I, got, I have plenty of games I've already paid money and invested into that I should cover before I would cover a free-to-play one. Let's see. Next we have Portal Knights, which is 60% positive right now and was 81% positive. I don't know why this would have been on my wish list in the first place. Let's see. It looks like it's a Minecraft clone of sorts. 
Did I perhaps think that this was going to unseat Minecraft? Hmm. Again, not sure why this is on my wish list. I I, sh I wouldn't have added it. At least I don't think think I would. Feels just like a glitch. Hmm. In all honesty, at least now, if I saw something that was a Minecraft clone, I would not, not play it. It's kind of ridiculous to play at, at this point. Either you're going to play Minecraft or you're not going to play anything at all. Here we have a hidden object game that probably isn't that good and it's not part of a real series. Uh, so I'll just remove that. Getting rid of a lot of the hidden object games, good. I still will have a lot of them on the wish list though. Uh, now we have the Postal series. Now there's some relevancy, I think, uh, with Postal. Postal 2 uh, being able to sell on controversy and get people to want to play it. But then I think Postal 1 actually sucks and Postal 3 actually sucks and honestly I'm not sure I mean this is such a long time ago I'm not sure that there really would be any relevant reason to cover any of the Postal series but I'll leave it on the wish list maybe somebody will tell me uh, that there's a reason to play it yeah 38 percent positive over the lifetime as far as po Postal 3 um, Postal is kind of like a predecessor to the game Hatred, um, I suppose. And here's Postal Redux, which is the remake of Postal 1. And see, the first game in the series, in the similar way that GTA 1 looked a lot like this, uh, it kind of makes it more cartoony and, and kid-friendly. Um, and not so hyper realistic and violent but so yeah the, there might be reason to play one and not play two or three but I'm not sure that there really is even that this is from a developer running with scissors which uh, apparently they decided to make a movie in 2017 oh yeah they, I think they actually made it to theaters but they've got nothing else even even that they've made guess maybe maybe there might be a reason to play the original version of Postal hmm. instead of the Redux version of Postal I don't think so no. and even the phrase Postal is kind of old-fashioned it's it's not it's not a relevant phrase anymore it's been probably at least a decade before any postal worker has gone crazy and committed any kind of acts of violence and, and it, it was just the news hyping up a few incidents as I'm sure next we have post-human society which is a new game so I guess I don't have to worry about it I can just put it on the follow list uh, I'd be surprised if that makes it to the wish list though uh, there, there definitely are two levels of quality there's a level of quality to have it on the follow list and then there's a level of quality to make it to the wish list so it should be a two filter system uh, here's precipice of darkness episode one which really should be labeled on a rain slick precipice of darkness episode one why you couldn't change your name on steam i don't know it should be pretty easy to get them all the same name here's episode two again questionable whether it's really necessary to play these games uh next we have pre dynasty uh what was that yeah Dynasty, I guess, would be the best way to pronounce that. 
Egypt. Like, several Egyptian games. I'm trying to find the best to play. This one's rated very positively. It looks like it's a... They're saying it's a puzzle game. I would say it's probably more of a resource management strategy game. What I'm seeing. Hmm. But it doesn't look bad. Certainly. Uh, let's move on. Next we have Prevent the Fall. As a role-playing game dungeon crawler. It's 62% positive. I think I could probably remove this from the wish list. Um, this is very, very bare bones. Uh, with about two bucks, in my opinion. That's what the re review was saying. Okay, Prevent the Fall can be removed. See if this developer DWS has developed anything else. Nope. Can be played in VR for some reason. See, that would make some sense that some of these basic games can be played in VR, but uh, when you compare them to regular games, they're super short and super bare bones. Yeah, in all honesty, this looks pretty good for a VR game. Although, how in VR are you swinging your axe, and how are you rolling, and how you're attacking? Um, it doesn't seem like you actually are rolling when you're in VR, so you lose a major part of the gameplay mechanic. Uh, next, we have a game called Preventative Strike. which is probably a shoot 'em up game that I probably don't want to play, but I don't have to decide that right now because I can just put it on the follow list since it's brand new let's move on next we have Prey which is the remake of a game called Prey that has nothing to do with Prey it's sort of a Bioshock clone like but it's a newer game of a similar style of game it has a little bit different gameplay mechanics a little bit metroidvania mechanics in it too um, you're on a space station there are aliens that can look like anything so they can they can look like coffee cups they can look like um, things now there have been some complaints over just how this game was balanced uh, because there's like a technical and versus a aggressive um, upgrade path and it feels like you probably have to upgrade your aggressive path um, at a certain point because it gets too difficult um, maybe that eventually would be patched or fixed but you can't really complain too much because it's rated very positively so that stays there and then Moon Crash is their latest DLC for Prey. So, yep, I want that too. If I had a any kind of real budget, if my YouTube channel made any money, I would have bought Prey brand new and played it. it. It would have been at the top of the list, I guess. Inherently, that means I should just put the Prey games at the top of the list too. Yeah, that makes sense actually do want to play them and so pray and then the DLC pray moon crash too many games with DLC I wish none of them had DLC honestly next we have a free-to-play puzzle indie anime horror game called Prince that's rated very positively um, since it's free I will just leave it on the wish list. I mean, but I don't have to take it off, do I? Is there any DLC? Hmm. Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like there's any content in the DLC. 
Next we have a game, point and click adventure game called Primordia. I'm a sucker for point and click adventure games so I don't have to really consider that. I'll just leave it on the wish list. And now we're going to get to the Prince of Persia th series which are the games that are the predecessors to the Assassin's Creed series. So um, at least this series of Prince of Persia Ubisoft games were. Uh, th this was the annualized things. Uh, I suppose they, by switching from Prince of Persia in that one character that, that was the main character um, to Assassin's Creed, they could have multiple different types of heroes from different lands and different time sets and different environments. So it was a kind of smart move, but it's kind of the same gameplay in some parts. Prince of Persia is definitely relevant, definitely something I like to cover. It's very positive, but it's pretty old too. And they, Ubisoft really abandoned it when they, they shouldn't have. Although, maybe now in modern times of 2018, maybe you can't make a game called Prince of Persia. Maybe that entire series is dead just because of political correctness. Maybe it's dead because... Uh, there have been too many bad Prince of Persia games. Um, and then getting the games in the right order is slightly questionable. It's like, is it the Warrior Within or then, then the Two Thrones? Or is it Two Thrones and Warrior Than Within? Or is it the Sands of Time? I believe it's Sands of Time is the first one. And then there is this reboot in 2008. Which, this was the last Prince of Persia game, I believe, that was made with a different character. I actually played this on the Xbox 360. It was pretty good, but a little difficult. Um, and I don't believe I ever played the DLC, so I, I didn't get the ending. Or the true ending. Hmm. Let's see if... let's see yeah there's no complaints here in the negative reviews of it it been missing any DLC or final ending so maybe that is integrated or maybe I'm thinking wrong maybe there wasn't any DLC but there was planned DLC hmm But yeah, I'd, I'd like to cover this this one too, even though it, it really doesn't have any relevancy. Because if... I, I think they did say if they were going to make a new Prince of Persia game, they would go back to the original character and not this guy. Next we have a game called Princess Isabel, which is a hidden object game. I don't see any reason why this would stay on the wish list. Like, I tried to get into hidden object games and see if they people would be interested in watching them. I don't know why people really would be. I, generally, it was it was an attempt to play easier games that could be finished quicker, but it didn't succeed, honestly. Now we're getting into the Princess Maker series. So, Princess Maker is kind of this niche game from Japan where it's a daughter raising simulator. Now Princess Maker 2 is kind of nefarious because or infamous because there was either a mod or a code you could do that would show the little girl you're seeing there in the middle screen in a some state of undress uh, which I don't know why that would have been built in anything it kind of brings up this phrase don't lewd the lolly lolly being like lolita little girl uh, before that was a phrase uh, in anime fandom um, but it's totally not what this game is it, it, it 
This is a dollar raising simulator with slight RPG elements. If you raise her a certain way, you'll get a certain ending. So if you uh, have her always out fighting in the dungeon, she'll she'll become a warrior. If you have her always studying math, she'll become a mathematician. Uh, if you have her studying religion, she'll become like a priest. Um, it probably is a game that if you're going to play in modern time, you need to walk through uh, after the first playthrough. It's it's a pretty big commitment. You know, it might be a pretty good mobile game too. Uh, five hours for the main story, but you'd want to play it multiple times. So it's a lot of work. Hmm. Let's see. Um, and there's a whole series of these. And so... Princess Maker 2 is that girl and then Princess Maker 3 and 4 I don't think came to the to the West so or if it did it, it there was a long delay you can see the graphics here look a lot different um, than than the previous game where the previous game was a very old PC game a floppy disk style game so you get a, you get a different girl. The systems get improved in Princess Maker Three compared to two. And then you, the latest one that just came out twenty in twenty eighteen, which is mixed reviews, is Princess Maker Five. So these are out of order, and you get another girl. This time it seems like they're in a more modern time frame. And so you kind of do the same thing over and over again. I guess if I was going to cover this series, there there is a point to be made here that, um, yeah, I suppose it is slightly a visual novel game too, although I, I would say not that much. Um, if I was going to play this series, it would be a lot of commitment and I could really only play it once through. So commit to whatever I raise would raise the daughter as and whether it's a good ending bad ending or more likely a mediocre ending i've played some games where your choices have a tendency to to leave you in the middle ending uh, a horror game i played for instance uh, downfall you had to do everything perfectly or everything absolutely 100 percent wrong to get one of the extreme endings and so because I missed one middle middle action uh, I I just got the mediocre ending in the middle so yeah you you just change the schedules and and and, and you're micromanaging helicopter parenting I suppose might be a good example of what this is but it's not really that odd it, it's not that different from like a Tamagotchi game. Now Princess Maker Refine is a remake of the first game which was less popular. See this one is the only one that is actually tagged with nudity so but that doesn't even inherently mean that the nudity is the main character and might be talking about some of the secondary characters and you could probably guess that the systems in Princess Maker 1 are not as good as the systems in the previous games. And Gynex, for instance, uh, that name is a big gnome in the anime uh, field circle, so we, we know that animation uh, company, and that's probably where you get the, probably for its time, very good graphics. So yeah, that'd be an interesting series to cover. And again, I'd love to own these games. I, I would probably need to rush through all of them. And then there's, um, yeah, and I, yep. Yeah. Uh, I think in the Princess Maker series, if you overfeed her, uh, in some of the games she'll become overweight and so it's a lot of effects like that uh, th there is a 
another game that's sort of like this where you're raising a robot boy but I, I couldn't remember the name of it and I'm not sure it's come to the to the West it's a really old game too um, next we have princess of tavern collectors edition which looks like it's probably a clicker resource manager game it's rated very mostly positive 78 percent hmm. but it, it kind of feels like it might just be um, a clicker dinner dash type game yeah again this is one of those games where I don't want to do a job in a game that, that seems ridiculous even if you have some mini games in it I, I still get the feeling that even though they're showing us these mini games this is actually mostly just a a, a dinner dash clone Hmm. Yeah, I don't see anything here. It says it's mouse only, which is an odd label to have. And then if you want to buy the other games from this developer, Farm Mills, you can buy this horror game, Hope Lake, and this uh, game called Riddles of the Past, and Sacred Almanac, Traces of Greed. <laughs> like four games that are not in any way related at all. Hope Lake is a hidden object game, horror game. That I think I did want to have it on my wish list or but I'm not hundred percent sure there's a good reason for it. To be on the wish list. And then Riddles of the Past is a detective hidden object game. Hmm. And I don't see a real reason why that would be on the wish list. So I'll close that. And then this is yet another hidden object game. So yeah. Three out of four of those games were hidden object games. Hmm. Moving on, we have Prismata, which is some kind of card game. It's a strategy game inspired by real-time strategy, deck builders, and tabletop player tabletop games. It looks like it's a combination of a lot of things. 82% positive, early access. He is Criperion, a famous Twitch streamer who plays Hearthstone a lot. Um, this needs to be on the fall list though because it's early access. Uh, as somebody who streams Hearthstone every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, yes, I'm always looking for the next big Hearthstone thing to replace it, but honestly, I'm also a little overcommitted unless everybody is that likes Hearthstone decides to to switch over to a new game and that new game also is as slow as Hearthstone is so I can talk about video game news and look at games that came out on Steam I don't see how I could transition to a new game uh, next we have Prismatica which looks like a puzzle game that looks good enough for me to leave on the wish list. looks like just a simplistic puzzle game Although I wouldn't pay $4.99, I might pay $0.99. Cents. Next we have a brand new game called Professor Madhouse that can just go on the fall list. Hmm. And then next we have Project Cars 2. This is mixed reviews. I'm not going to play a racing game that's mixed reviews, so I can just remove that. That one goes. Next we have Project High Rise, which is a tower sim. I think I probably have too many tower sim or Tim sim tower clones already on my wish list, but 
know what I'll leave it people like it it's rated well um, see the weird thing here is I know that there's at least two games like this on my wish list but they're by different developers by different names so how could I get them on the wish list next to each other so I could compare them or see them at the same time uh, there doesn't seem like there's a great system there uh, let's see next we have project nightmares case 36 H Henrietta Kedward like I almost certainly would guess this is the only game from this developer yep well since this is an early access horror game it, it doesn't look terrible but you know it's a lot a lot of games that could look very much like this Oh, procedural scare system. That's interesting. Like, it changes how you play. It, every time is different. Hmm. This definitely seems like it's more of a game. Normally, because it's early access, I'd put it on my wish list, but I'm gonna. I mean, the file list, but I'm gonna keep it on the wish list. Sounds interesting. Uh, uh, let's see next we have project temporality so it's like a time game of some sort mind bending power of single player co-op so you have to make copies of yourself concept that's been done quite a lot in video games but Yeah, this looks good. Sorry, I'm just sitting here. Yeah, looks like I'll leave that on the wish list. Uh, next we have projector face. I'm trying to get through all this. It's a point and click. I don't see any reason why I would take a point and click off. Next we have prophecy one, the Viking child. Hmm. I'm trying to see what the relevancy here would be. Because I've never heard of this game. Let's see if this developer went on to make anything else interesting. That's what the humans collection is. Nope, that doesn't look that interesting either. I I think Pico Interactive is a publisher who's published with publish some old games like really it's just pushover from Pico Interactive that interests me so yeah I'm gonna take this off the wish list if there is a prophecy too also it's not on Steam so that that would be an issue and then we're gonna get into prototype now prototype 2 is 64% positive over all but 81% positive in the last 30 days um, people weren't really in love with Prototype 2, certainly, but I played Prototype 1 and I liked it pretty well. I think it is, it makes sense to, to play the sequel. It may have been really that this game also just did not run well on PCs and now, uh, there is a small chance that older games uh, will just run better because you have fat people have faster computers but honestly it happens way more in the opposite direction where old games run worse prototype one for example here is 80 percent positive and yeah that's it's kind of expensive for a 2012 game uh, but the historic lowest price was seven dollars and 41 cents but even at that that's still kind of expensive for a six-year-old game it's unlikely that a prototype 3 would ever be made activision blizzard not likely to to bother to make anymore yep Prototype 1 rated very positively. 
though, so at the very least I should play the first game. Um, it's a story where the main character gets a bunch of like alien symbiote powers like like Venom and start in um, um, in Spider-Man. Yeah, and it probably started off as a Spider-Man game. Okay. Next we have Saibei, which seems like it's a racing game where you control gravity. I'll leave it on the wish list. It seems like it's a slightly unique idea. That's probably not going to get any more reviews though, but it is 96% positive. Next we have Cyburst, which I don't really have to decide about. I can just put it on the follow list because it's it's less than a year old. Are we getting towards the end, hopefully. Next we have Psychopaths Mandatory Happiness. Psychopaths being an anime that was really popular for a couple seasons when it came out and still has some relevancy. It's an interesting story, so it would be an opportunity to talk about at least the first season that I've seen of Psychopaths. Um, clearly not a lot of people have reviewed it or played it, so it wasn't that relevant. It's tagged as a visual novel. I guess if I was to play a visual novel, this would be the top of tier visual novel. So for that reason, maybe I put it at the top of my wish list. Um, mm, there is also maybe some trouble with playing let's see uh playing psychopaths because if it's like the first season of the anime it may not be youtube friendly eh, it's rated teen so that should be fine hmm. there were a few episodes and scenes in the, the first season that were pretty pretty bloody and gory uh, next we have Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin. I can't play it, but it's a Psychonauts game and so I'm keeping it on the wish list. It kind of sucks that I'm hoping at some point that they would release this in a non-VR format, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. I probably could buy this uh, a Double Fine bundle and... Uh, get it pretty cheap too because I think I own pretty much everything on here already next we have a game called Pulsin which is a music rhythm game hmm like a dance dance of uh, revolution style game seems basic I don't see anything here that makes me want to play this game and it's still early access from 2015 that feels abandoned so I'm gonna remove this from the wish list I think we're getting close to the end uh, next we have pummel party which it may not look like it is sort of a uh, Mario Party clone if you were to instead involve more violence um, so it, it looked pretty interesting it's rated very positively it does have a single player element so I think you're in a good position here where I could play it and say hey this is the best Mario Party clone for PC um, if you're willing to just ignore the fact that these characters are just kind of random generic characters which is I guess the major hang up there uh, next we have Punch Planet which is early access and came out a year ago as a fighting game which 
a unique art style, it seems like. I'll put this on the follow list. I recall actually adding this one to the to the wish list. Um, but by this time next year, if it's still in early access, it's probably gonna get removed. Next we have Pushover, which I have a game that which is an old game that is a domino pushing game. And I remember playing it when I was a kid, so I have that nostalgia, so I would like to play it again. It's a puzzle game. It introduces uh, different types of dominoes. The yellow ones are the regular dominoes, and the ones with the red stripes, three red stripes, are the final dominoes. The one with the big middle red stripe will continue following until it hits a solid red one, which won't uh, work. I believe you have to push all the dominoes. Uh, and you have to be careful not to get crushed by the dominoes as you're playing as this ant. And every time you beat a level, it shows you a code. And see these, these dominoes here with the red line fly up and and hit things. So I could I could continue this uh, talking about this game, but I really just want to cover it. So, yep, that's at the top of my wish list. Next we have Poyo Poyo Tetris, which I guess that should be at the top of my wish list too. It's probably the right Tetris game to play and buy on Steam. Uh, there is a regular Tetris game, but it's not very good. I bet you can find some older uh, Tetris games too. But th there's only slight differences between regular Tetris and Poyo Poyo Tetris. Uh, and you're, you're still doing, it's still pretty much the same. Uh, Poyo Poyo will have pieces drop down and and break but I, and it has like anime characters also as an element so this uh, things play a little bit differently anyways moving on next we have puzzle chambers where you have to run around and escape r escape rooms Hmm. It's 90% positive of 20 user reviews. It's probably not going to get any more user reviews. It's cheap. In fact, it's been as low as 50%, uh, 50 cents. I I bet this is relatively short, uh, short game too. But I'm willing to to give it a try. Next, we have Puzzle Quest. I don't know if I really would want to play the Puzzle Quest games, but if I was going to play. A match three game puzzle quest should be the one so it should be on the wish list uh, doesn't look too bad it's rated 79% positive although here's a question where is puzzle quest one there's puzzle quest challenge of the warlords and puzzle quest galactus but I don't see puzzle quest one Let's see how this works if we just search Puzzle Quest. Maybe the Puzzle Quest one was on a cell phone. A Marvel Puzzle Quest, which is free to play though, is pretty bad. And... Hmm. Yep, I do not see Puzzle Quest one listed. <laughs> It would have come up at, by this point. We wouldn't have had to scroll down this far. It probably is a better game than Puzzle Quest to play, though. But Puzzle Quest Collectus is definitely not it. Moving on, we have Puzzle Mint, which is a different kind of puzzle game looks interesting I don't exactly understand how it works but 
Oh, it's like a gravity bending 3D platformer. Interesting. That looks cool. See, if we're at P-U-Z right now, we might be at the end. Uh, puzzle Quest Challenge of the Warlords rated very positively. This might be the one to play. No, honestly, this this is probably Puzzle Quest 1. Actually, come to think of it. Hmm. Let's make sure we add that to the wish list. Next, we are at P Y R E as in Pyre. It's rated very positively. I'm not 100% sure I really want to play this game. But I have to bow to the masses. 90% positive of 3,991 3, uh, videos. So, yep, that'll stay on the wish list. And that at that point, we are done. So, it was a long journey. And at the beginning, at least, it started to feel like we were adding more games than we were removing. I think we've at the very least removed a little bit more than what we added a lot of a lot of games here uh, a lot of which not much change happened to they just got left on the wish list but we did definitely find things that are going to get removed and we definitely found things that it should should have been on the follow list and we found some things that should be at the top of the wish list which is great uh, now the next letter will be Q and I don't really believe there will be any letter that we have to skip over because there's just so many games out there but I wouldn't be surprised if Q is pretty short yeah it looks like it's not a super long list but that's okay I knowing myself pretty well i still probably will drag it out pretty long that's going to be it for this recording i ask at the end of all my recordings that you like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos because that helps me with youtube and tells them that my videos are worth watching when you subscribe please click the notification bell if you want a friend to follow me on things like twitter tumblr google plus steam or battle.net all of those links are down below in the description box. And if you want to support me, there's two ways you can do that. You can support me through Patreon, through a monthly donation. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game, whether it's a game you'd like to see me cover or a game off my wish list. If you don't want to make a decision, you can also friend me and gift me gift cards, which helps too. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.